Yo, yo, what is up? What is up, fam, bam, all across the world? It's your boy Dre. We back at it again doing another live stream here on the Dre Sanchez YouTube channel. Big up to my wifey, first and foremost, and kids for the support. Mike Jones is in the house, man. What is good? Happy Sunday to you, brother. Greg Hill checking in. What is up, Greg? And Hog Flies checking it out. Big up to all three of you guys. And we got my boy Green Light flying along with us today in these private jet art uh private jet ops is what we're doing guys so uh yeah guys we are back at it again if you guys want to fly we're going to be going from duluth minnesota down to epley field which is in omaha nebraska and uh we may do a second leg that leg is about an hour and 25 minutes so we'll see what's Rackalacking with that man. So uh without further ado, uh there's one thing that I forgot to do. Man, I need to get the uh rusty and dusty uh overlay up for you guys. So let me uh because truth be told, we're just kind of figuring out uh actually where we wanted to go. Um and uh so I hadn't did the flight o overlay information yet for you fine fine folks. So there we go, and uh, we will get that on and popping. Once we, let's go ahead and jump into this cold and dark cockpit. Bada bing, bada boom, and then we can get all that information up for you guys. And let's get the browser situation going. Bada bing, bada boom, and let's start getting this plane organized for our route. Again, uh, let's go ahead and get some uh, power on the aircraft and uh, go from there. Let's turn the music off just for the time being uh, so that we can make sure we have an ample radio check for you folks. All right, guys. So welcome aboard. And uh, as you can see here, we are cold and dark. So the first thing we want to do uh, is not that is come over here. See, close passenger door. Let's open baggage doors. And bada bing, bada boom. Let's get the GPU going. Get some traffic. Mic check. power on. Let's see. Uh, read you five by five. Uh, how do you read me? Bye, bye, bye. Okay, roger that. All right, and technically that noise wasn't even supposed to come uh, because the aircraft is off. So we're going to fire it up now. Let's see, we already have all of everything else into the uh, auto positions. Now you're going to see the avionics suite coming on here, of course, and uh, it'll be aligning here. You can see the nice little countdown. And let's come over here and check our Bacazado in the house. Big up to you, Bacazado. Um, thank you, everyone, for tuning in, of course. Okay, so we, what I like about this tablet, it gives you kilograms and pounds, so we have 3,608 pounds of fuel. One thing that I don't see a whole lot of folks doing with this aircraft as well is actually using the V-Speeds. Uh, it's not a feature, but you got to kind of set it up. So um, there is a uh, chart that you pull up. Um of all of the land and this thing is kind of weird and maybe i'll show you guys here in a second but you literally have to look at your uh runway takeoff uh length and get it going that way so let's just do that now because uh otherwise we're gonna have our feelings hurt and again that was green light that you guys heard so my man is flying along of course and any like i said greg anybody else bacazado anybody else wants to fly along in their own way however they can uh now's the time to do it uh because it doesn't take that long to load in and get these bad boys up and running so just let me know if that's what you guys are doing so here we are guys so let's also uh so we're gonna observe this runway is the max the max this thing you know for the chart is 8340 feet but it can be as short as a 6,000 foot runway so we're more than good here on that um, and then we're going to have to check the temperature and then our weight to get our figures put in there. So let's come over here to the VASIM network. And again, the command and the regular features dot metar plus where you're at. And you're going to see it populate there. So the altimeter is 3004. The temperature is uh, 
nice and cold minus 12 Woof. all right we got that on we better see if we can also get some other we're gonna definitely have to start these engines and get them going to let them warm up uh so altimeter is 3004 so again this is the glass cockpit that's one thing i love about this aircraft you can also use the feature of your keypad just to type it in or your keyboard so we got 3004 we are going to be cruising at flight level 360 uh so we're going to get that in there and uh, while we're thinking about our transponder code, let's do the uh, general transponder code of 2200. And uh, we won't put the transponder on just yet. And 36, boom, boom, boom. So we'll continue to do some stuff here, but let's continue to kind of work on our V speeds um, so that I can kind of show you guys how that works up in this bumba clot. Okay, so uh, we more than likely, uh, we can definitely do flaps one. And it is, uh, what do we say, minus 17. Let us check that out. Okay, yes, the temperature is minus 12. So let me pull this chart up and give you guys kind of a little idea of what exactly your boy is talking about. Let's come over here in this screen super quick. And there. So this is the chart that, so this comes with when you get your, uh, Phenom 300 from from Aerobask. Um in the documents portion in your aircraft folder and explain you'll find this document in here and uh, I believe this is one is just the performances documentation so basically the way this thing works is first of all you have to know what temperature is outside we said it's minus 12 minus 12 is closer to minus 10 than it is negative 15 so we can just kind of assume that's here the runway is a uh, longer then uh dog on 8340 feet so we're good there so it really doesn't even uh depend on what our uh weight is per se this thing is more uh and the takeoff weights in kilograms and this is the weight here so these are the different weights of the aircraft so if we look and it's and here with the weights it's not really concerned with you know like for this one is a thousand sixty eight kilograms so i suppose uh it is concerned with that but i'm not sure if these are the actual weights per se because that wouldn't make any sense i'm trying to there's a little chart too to tell you what's what so let's go back up that's the cool thing about it i'll tell you what it is so number four find the minimum runway link that is closest to your uh tora Below it, you will find the V-speed. So that's the minimum runway length that's closest to your T-O-R-A. So it even gives you this little table right here. Um, recommended up to round up. So round up altitude to the next upper table. Same with the temperature, round to the upper closest, which we did. So it's either way. Find the minimum runway length that is closest to your Torah, and it will be corresponding V-speeds. Find the limiting weight here is the max takeoff weight, which is, that's the number five. So if you look here, the max takeoff weight are these up top. So these are the max takeoff weights up here. And uh, pretty much uh, here's the, you know, flaps clean numbers down here. So basically, again, we're just really concentrating on the runway length. Uh, and here's all the numbers here. This is empty mass total. So this is the number here that we're really worried about for our weight anyway in uh, kilograms is uh right here total mass we're at 8094 pounds the max you could have is that so we're good to go there and the runway is at 10,000 feet uh in length so essentially all we have to do is come down here we're going to be doing flaps one wing stab and engine but we're going to be doing the ice protection on guys so actually we're going to need to find a uh, dry runway with ice protection on so you're going to scroll down a lot. Okay, one, still off. We're going to be doing it with it on because it is minus 12. So we don't want any chances of any surfaces freezing us out. Boy, there's a lot of charts right here. Flap two. Okay, these are for flaps two. There's a lot. We got to get down to where it says on. Okay, here's on. Flap one, dry runway, which we have, ice protection, wing stab, engine on. And we are negative 12. So we're looking at V speeds basically right here. Um, 
pretty much the same. See, 113 and 120 in the same category. So uh, that's what we're going to do. 113 and 120. So let's come over here to our V speeds. So we're going to go, oops, over here to 113, 113. And we're going to do uh, 120. I'm sorry, 113 there. This is actually the V2 is 120. And the VFS at the bottom, ours is going to be bada bing, bada boom, 138. All right, there we go. 138. We got that all situated for now. Now we can kind of uh, come back into the ground and everything else should be good. So now let's get back into our AVI tab. We're not leaving on a departure. So we're going to go ahead and just really look at the flight plan and see what it entails uh, for us getting in there. So let's get back in here and come back over to the main screen. Uh, let's get this private jet up and running, Bakazato says. So now here we're back to the main screen. So let's go ahead and also plug in the... Uh, flight plan which doesn't have any SID but it does have most certainly does have a uh, arrival so we're going to be going direct to the MCW VOR so let's come over here and get our wonderful uh, wonderful situation here set up guys and I suppose we can get a few jams on now that we got the aircraft up and the radio check done all right so see if we stick with this song or not um so what we're going to do now is come over here into the flight plan area and here's a flight plan that's an old one so we need to come delete that so we are going to do certainly that delete the flight plan here guys okay flight plan is deleted now we're going to tap the center to re-energize the little cursor there and instead of using it like the old gns 530 this one allows you to just type in the actual characters so we're going to type in mike Charlie Whiskey, which is the Mason City VOR. We're going to enter that. Bada bing, bada boom. And then from there, we're going to go to another VOR, which is the uh, it's Foxtrot Oscar Delta. We can also hit enter down here. If we so choose, and that's Fort Dodge. That's uh, 51 miles away. And then, of course, we have our arrival. So before we put our arrival in, we have to put Epley Field, which is Kilo Oscar Mike Alpha. And there's Epley Field. Let's go ahead and enter that. Bada bing, bada boom. And uh, it's given our information for Epley Field. Now, what we need to do um, is let's calculate our runways here based off of the winds. Uh, so the winds are at uh, eight knots, basically out of the north. So if we come here, uh let me see here what did we just do i heard a click man okay i figured that's what we did I accidentally hit the speed spoilers so now if we come over here and look at the available runways runway nine is definitely the cat's jammies and then we know we're going to be flying south so we'll probably have to do a right turn or a left turn out of here so let's also look at something quick what i like to do is go to other see there's really no even departures out of here there's approaches so let's look at runway nine approach and the reason why i'm doing this it'll tell you how we can circle from the runway okay so here's lake superior so we're gonna depart the runway and we are gonna do our right turn to our southern heading it's basically what we're gonna do so we'll come straight out We'll, we should be coming straight out of our east headed right over Lake Superior. We'll do our right turn and go down. So other than that, we don't need this at all here. Let's just go ahead and get our Epley filled up as well. There we go. And boom. Let's also... That way we have everything. Again, a lot of the success of the flight is literally in the, uh, in the planning here. Okay, now here's Epley filled. Let me go ahead and get that matter going. All right, guys, so the matter for that, guys, as you see, the winds are at five knots, basically out of the west. Um, so that tells me they're out of the west. 
at uh, 300 so of course these runways here are gonna make the most sense and uh, here's the general aviation side so we're looking for 32 right it's got 8,500 feet more than enough runway for us to stop on and now let's look and see what type of approaches we have for 32 right okay we got an ILS for 32 right so I like this man and then uh, we have to remember our, we're coming on the length one so let's get that up as well and let's see if we can go ahead and plan for our arrival to be pretty seamless so let's get the length one and uh, let's see we are gonna be coming from Fort Dodge and it's going to bring us all the way down here. Turbo Jets expect 16,000 right here at length. Which, of course, if we're going to be landing uh, basically runway 32, uh, it's going to be basically coming up this way. So we'll come here and more than likely, here's the Omaha VOR. Um, which, if that is an option for us to arrive, that's what we'll do, guys. So that looks pretty good. So now we've gathered some more information uh, about our arrival. So let's go ahead and come over here to Procedure. And we're going to go ahead and put in our arrival first, which is the standard terminal arrival. Bada bing. And we're doing the length one. And of course, we're doing Fort Dodge. We're not. Yep, we're going to load that. That's weird. There we go. Uh, now let's go back into our flight plan. And you can see it's vectoring us because we haven't chosen a approach yet so now we're going to come in and choose their approach and we're saying three two right ILS three two right and look uh, OVR let's go back yep see Omaha OVR that's what we want so that's our transition right there oops my bad so OVR is what we want guys we're going to hit enter and we do want our minimums on. Let's check our minimums there uh, for that uh, landing. ILS, the minimums are 1181. So there's a little trick not to have to rotate this. We do have our minimums on. So what we're going to do is switch it over here. And then we're going to just put 10 feet in. And we're not going to worry about that. Um, so now we can load this bad boy. Load that up. Let's go back to flight plan. And then now after Link, uh, really, we can go from Link. If we look at the arrival here, truth be told, we can literally go from Link straight over on this heading right here to the VOR. So we don't need a vector. We can just bada bing, bada boom, because that's what we're expecting. So once again, wrong button. So as we continue to modify this, let us... Uh, basically let's see what we want to do here length they said expect 16,000 so let's put that in there so there's 16,000 that's also going to give us our uh, and we'll just verify that non turbo just expect 10 turbo just expect 16,000 so we got 16,000 in there and then uh, we can once we get to length then that's when we're gonna activate through the approach so that'll be our job to do that and uh, we've got beef at uh, 2,000 feet so let's come back over here and now start looking at our approach So beef is at uh, 2,800 feet uh, right here at the Omaha VOR. We need to be getting down to 2,800 feet. Um, and it looks like here there is a procedure turn that can be done in order to get to the right amount of feet here. So uh, let's go ahead, guys, and set our uh, Omaha as well for 2,800 feet. So right now it looks like it says that already. Okay, so we want to set this one to 2,800 feet as well. Now, if we don't get there 
at that altitude, that's fine too. We can do the we can put ourselves into that procedure turn. Okay, that looks good. Okay, see, and it's got us. It's got us actually doing a procedure turn here anyway, so uh, we'll shoot for that. And length, we gotta. I don't know the 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 DME between length and OVR, so let's go check that now. So we'll have enough to get down from, uh, should be 16,000 down to 2,800. Because if we come and take a look at the arrival, it tells you the DME on that radio 45. So it's uh, distance 34.3. So that'll be enough for us to send down. Let's see, we're doing 16 down to 28. So that's almost 16 minus 3. It's really 13,000 uh, times three. Three times three is nine. So that'll be it'll be close. We'll have to pitch down a little bit more to make it, but we can. If not, we'll do the procedure turn. Uh, that way, we're not rushed doing that, guys. And almost, uh, I want to say we should just get because this thing is gonna definitely try to do a procedure turn. Um, so I'm thinking. Hey, honey, it's my daughter's in here. I'm debating. See, it's got this procedure turn so we'll leave it there we'll have to go direct to this beef uh once we make that decision so that we don't go into this procedure turn so as closer we get to this ovr before we get here we'll have to go direct to this beef to bypass that um or just vector ourselves and get on the ils and we'll be just fine there as well guys so so there's our initial uh vnav point which i'm satisfied with guys and now let's go and take a look at our runway departure heading to put that in our heading so that we can vector ourselves so we are going to depart heading 93 okay so let's go ahead and put that in our situation here again very nice and easy with the glass cockpit bada bing bada boom let me check on you guys in the chat because i certainly have been captain geo's in the house hd simulations in the house big up to you guys man Appreciate you guys checking in, man. Captain Geo, my executive decision type of brothers here. HD, big up to you as well, guys. So now we got our 93 situation going on here, which is good. But we also want to make sure this is in the GPS, which it is. Because the GPS, we're going to have it basically going direct to uh, that first waypoint. Um, which it doesn't indicate that right now. So we'll have to come over here. And go all the way up. Because this probably has us. So it's got us direct there first. But once we get to the end of the runway, we'll be going direct there. So no need to worry you guys selves about that. Let's continue to get. Now let's get the uh, glare shield panel all set up. So actually, we'll do it from here because it's not too bad. So we have 36,000 feet. And we are initially going to go on the heading mode. But trust me, once we go direct, this is also going to be, it'll reflect which way we need to go, which we know is basically a southern heading. So actually, if we come over here and take a look at this, we can even plan what we need to turn to. So if south is 180, then we can assume 190, right at 200 uh, is going to be. So if we come over here, let's say to a heading of uh we'll say 210 or 220 that'll have us doing that intersection so we're going to come out here com com uh commence our right turn to a heading of 220 <clears throat> and actually truth be told i'll just fly runway heading manually and then allow it to to make our turn for us so let us actually fix that so let's put ourselves on a heading of actually 220 And we'll enter that and that'll be the heading that I'm more concerned about upon my departure and again we're just going to be taxiing guys uh, alpha to the base of runway 9 for immediate departure with that being said let's go ahead and get the music off again and let's get the doors closed music's coming off and let me go out and make sure he is November 71 Charlie Hotel. And November 71 Charlie Hotel. This is November 350 Kill Tango. We'll be go ahead and get those engines started up now. Let them warm up a little bit. And then we'll announce the taxi to Runway 9 via Alpha.
All right, so hopefully he had that. All right, guys, so without further ado, let's go ahead and close the doors before we start the engine. Open, open, open. Let's close the baggage aft. Open, open, open. And uh, there's no pack X today, guys. It's just me flying out my family. Told my wife that we'll simulate that she's on here, guys. Going down to Omaha, Nebraska for no unknown reason. <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right. So aircraft doors are closed. But in order to make sure of that, you just can check on this status here. Um, and you'll indicate, you know, it'll show you all of the doors are closed. And so that beep that we got as soon as we started closing the doors, that was it. Let's mic, let's mic check. Uh, radio check uh, for November 7-1 Charlie Hotel. 5x5, five five, sir. I got you right now, and I'm still firing up the engines myself. Okay, roger that, good sir. Once I get him fired up, let him warm up a couple seconds, I'll announce the taxi, and we can get up out of here. Right. All right, guys. So, with that being said, the only thing we need to come down here, guys, is make sure that this is in the auto, and one click there. And we'll click it over. Let's make sure our nav light's on now that we're getting ready to have a hot aircraft. This doesn't have a red beacon. Now we're going to do one click to the right. Okay, right engine is running on the generator. This is the time that we're actually... I actually should have started the left since the... No, actually, we did it right. The APU... The GPU is on the left. So now we can get rid of that GPU. Because we don't need it anymore. Close that GPU panel. Now we can start the left engine. We'll let that spool up. And you're going to take note here, if we come and monitor this, it'll automatically connect, which it has. You can see that it's balancing out the load so that everything is actually copacetic here. Stell Park, what's up, man? Keyshawn Christopher is in the house. Appreciate you checking it out. So now that we realize that's good, we can get a couple of our other systems on. We're getting a fault over here of the uh, environmental control systems, one and two off. So let's get that up to where both. Now we need to turn our hydraulics on, guys. So down here, we'll tuck right in here. Get those hydraulics on. Now, we already did let them know that we are taking off with everything on as far as the heating uh, anti-ice. So, let's get that anti-ice on, guys. And wing stab is definitely on. So, now, uh, we'll also double check our anti-icing screen here. And we'll get that going here. And now, it says, uh, this is just showing anti-ice 1 and 2 are on with the wing stab is arm. The cross bleeds are off, so let's go ahead and figure all that out, guys. Uh, so here's our bleeds. We need to put this into the auto position to get rid of that message. Now you see that message done, and now we have emergency light not armed and oxygen low pressure. Oxygen low pressure, we're going to introduce the oxygen back into the system by pushing that down. And then we come up here to our emergency light. That is on. And there's actually one more test that we didn't do that we need to do, so we're going to do our stall test. Stall test is complete. Put that back into auto. Everything is into auto here. We are looking good on our left console. And you can see the only thing we have on here, which we already know, is our anti-ice. The last thing we're going to do, we're just letting the engines warm up as well, guys, because it is minus 12 outside. Let's re-investigate the meter for Duluth, since we have been doing a little bit of chit-chatter here. And just make sure that uh, nothing has changed in the altimeter. See, the winds are still 8 knots uh, at a 10 degrees, minus 12. The altimeter now is 3007, so that's why it's important that we always get the most updated right before we're ready to start taxing. 3007. Bada bing, bada boom. And there we go. And honestly, before I even do anything, before I forget to go direct, uh, let's get onto the flight plan. And now let's just activate that direct from where we're at. 
which is fine because all I need is my heading to get there. So, let me see what just, yeah, okay, so there we go. So now MCW is in the direct. That's going to do its little load situation there. Let's also range this out a little bit. So again, out, and it gives us our target line to get to, which again, we're going to do a heading of basically 220. Uh, and you can see now what we just did. You see this course bearing line is indicating the first VOR that we're going to, which is uh, Mike Charlie Whiskey. And you can see now that we have a good cross here uh, of about a heading of 220. So when we make that right turn, we're going to be coming across this. And then all we got to do, guys, once we get direct to that is actually put it in the nav and let the aircraft do its thing. All right, so everything here is good to go. Let's get our AVI tab on. And uh, let's go to the first officer side and make sure we are clear right, which we are, to spin around. Because we are most certainly going to be uh, doing that situation. Let's get the flight cams on for you guys now. Flight controls are free and clear. And, of course, let us do our flight controls check. We're going to go full up. Full down. Neutral. And they're on left. An alien on right and I can't remember in the status page if it shows us any of that happiness which it doesn't okay and we'll do our rudders right now before we leave all right panels bright all right guys let's go ahead we'll leave the strobes off emergency lights on let's get those Let's get those taxi lights on, of course. Let's go outside and do our official check. And, of course, while we're doing this, flaps are coming down. The flaps one. And we are ready to go, guys. All right. Let's see here. I think I had something on me nose, man. All right, guys, so we are ready to go. Let's verify our trims, finally. Trims uh, are in a good position, and our flaps are indicating one, as well, obviously, selected to one. And I believe everything else is good to go here. Now, one thing that is easy to forget on here is the transponder, because it's kind of tucked away and hidden away. So let's put it here. We got 220. Now we want to go uh, to make it come on. So we're going to hit Alt. Now the transponder's on, and then of course we're going to back out of here, and we're going to get our timer ready, which is going to be right here. This is going to be the time we're going to hit enter once we get out of here. Um, and then finally, but not least, you guys remember I said that I was going to do something with those barrels, which this is all working out perfect to let those engines and the aircraft heat up nicely. Uh, Bakazato says, after the stream, let's hook up and get that sound pack for A350 working and maybe get that 777 cockpit mod up. Hey, no doubt, Bakazato, you ain't got to tell me a thing. All right, decision height is 1181. Remember I said we didn't need to worry about it because we don't. Boom, we make it easy street. Now we have our decision height of 1180 feet, uh, which is more than perfect for us guys. And then we're going to make this already at 230. That'll change anyway once I do my flight level change, so don't worry about that, guys. And now that's essentially it. Oh, what is up, Miss Shaquille Oatmeal? Uh, that's right. <laughs> I love the private jet flights. No rules. That's right. No rules. And Duluth traffic. November 350 Kilo Tangles here at the General Aviation Ramp. We'll be taxiing to runway 9 for departure out to the south via Alpha for Duluth traffic. All right, guys. Let's get her done here. And we'll go with our parking brake is off. Let's see, altimeter is 3007. Nice and easy, does it?
So we know we're going to fly out. We'll do runway heading. Get clear and then start our turn to 220. And be done with it. I'm going to slide myself up a little bit so we don't get any of that that chair in there. Even though I, I definitely hate being so close to this thing, but that's okay. So, welcome aboard everybody, guys. We got our transponder on. We'll get our timer on. And then we're going to be out of here. We are uh, outbound from Duluth International Airport up here. I actually used to come up here a lot for work. My wife and some of my kids, because not all of them were born when we used to come up here, uh, actually used to, to come up here to Duluth. All right, you can see we're going to be bearing left up over here. And November 7, 1, Charlie Hotel. Are you getting ready to taxi as well, good sir? Yes, sir. November 7, 1, Charlie Hotel. So about to taxi. Okay, roger that, fam. All right, that's green light flying with. Again, hope everybody is doing good. And uh, we are headed over to Omaha, Nebraska. In our Aerobass Phenom 300. Guys, we're just continuing to follow Alpha around till we get to the base of runway nine. Our V rotate is uh, V1 and V rotate has been confirmed, verified at 113 knots. Our VAC, our climb out speed is 120, and our flaps clean speed should be 138. Once we get in the air, I actually don't even know what views I have up here set up on this thing. So, guys, I want to say thanks for riding along. And, of course, uh, we need to get our departure situation going on here. We do the pulse border circle around the, the logo on our departure. So we have that activated now. And then once we get up in the air, we turn it off. So that is indicating that we are departing. And uh, Duluth, Como. Okay, so we got the right stuff on the overlay. Flying time is about an hour and 25 minutes if we do it right. And hopefully we do it right. We're using Active Sky for the weather. We are on the VATSIM network. However, we don't have any ATC. Sometimes that's good when you're flying as a group. All right, it's kind of a long taxi, guys. Yeah, hey, hey Dre, these BA just gave one of the hardest door back. <laughs> Boy, you silly, dude. Where's Leo when you need him? What is BA do rag? <laughs> oh my goodness, bumper clot. You made it home yet, Gio? Are you still on the road, baby? Are you still on the road? Got that man working. That man's ATSing for real. All right, guys. We're almost at the base of the runway. And then, of course, the last thing we'll, re we'll need to redo again is our vertical profile. All right, there's our vertical profile. I like to go at about 2,300 feet pitch up. So, that is what we're going to do. Duluth International Traffic, November 350 Kilo Tango will be entering runway Niner for immediate departure out to the south. We'll do call of clear of runway once clear of runway for Duluth International Traffic. All right, you guys, we are at the base of the runway.
we're looking at final right now and it does look nice and clear Got you. Geo says he's not home yet, but he can't wait to get home to break that flight yoke in some more. I feel you, Bumba Clot. All right, guys. Let's get that landing light on. And we can get the strobe on with my switches. It actually works. Once again, final clear. All right, passengers, family, stay comfy back here. Don't worry about it. Hubby slash daddy got. November 7th, one Charlie Hotel will be taxing via golf to Charlie for departure on the way 03. To blue traffic. All right, guys, slow it up a little bit. You know what we got to do. Let's start that clock. Boom, clock is started. Now we can get that time reference off. The loop traffic, number 350, kill Tingle, one runway nine, take off out to the south, the loop traffic. All right, guys, everything is all legit. Let's go out and get a little how we look. Straight up gangster style. Here we go, guys. Tow brakes activated. Right, there's that takeoff power okay here we go takeoff power is almost set there we go there we go takeoff power set airspeed is alive Ooh, we got some winds coming out of this bad boy don't forget 113 is that rotation speed Ooh, right rudder right rudder all right nice and up easy Okay, there we go. Landing gear is coming down. Or I should say going up. Flaps are coming up. Let's pull back on that speed. See, it's trying to have us make a left, but we're not going to. All right. Let's go ahead and start turning our aircraft. Still hand flying it. Right out over that lake. I like our pitch so far. Let's keep making our turn. As you guys can see now. All right. We're just going to pitch down a little bit. I'm still hand flying it, guys. Duluth International, November 350 Kilo Tango is clear of runway 9, climbing out to the south, Duluth International traffic. Alright guys, so we're continuing to make that turn. Just going to pitch her down a little bit. Still continuing that right turn guys. Now you can see the flight director likes what we're doing. It's no longer telling us to turn the other way because it realizes, hey, we're this way. So here in a second, we will be uh, most certainly handing it over to the autopilot. Remember, my goal was to climb at about 230 knots. Hey, okay, we're almost ready to hand it over to the autopilot. Let's get on those flight directors, guys. Okay, there's that speed getting kind of right where we want it. And uh, it's on autopilot now, guys. And let's do our flight level change. There's our flight level change, guys. It'll pitch back up. And guys, there you go. We have departed and we are going to be direct to Mike Charlie Whiskey. And you can see out there the great state of Minnesota. It's nice and frosty out there, guys. Okay, let's do our after takeoff checklist here. K 
Okay, gear is up. Flaps are up and clean. Uh, we still have our anti-ice on, which we're going to go into the suit. That's good. Uh, landing lights are still on because we are... Oh, we, those can come off. We have past 10,000. Strobes are still on, and everything is looking good, guys. So landing lights have came off. And uh, pretty soon here, if you look down at the map display here, we're going to be banking left. Let me see if I have any left views here. Let's see what views we got up in here, guys. Okay, we got this wing. Uh, I don't know about another wing. Let me see what we got up in here. Okay, we got that. That's kind of a nice view. We'll get another view going here in a second. Oh yeah, it looks nice and frosty down there. All right, guys. Appreciate everybody hanging out with me on that departure. So far, everything is looking good. We're passing through 14,300, keeping our speed pitched up. We're actually going to pitch pitch for more speed now, guys. Still in the traffic. November 71 Charlie Hotel is off 03. Still in the traffic. All right, green light is airborne. Now I'm doing it the hard way, but I can also come right here and use a glass cockpit. I can literally just come over here and type in, I want to climb out at 280. Boom, there we go. So she'll pitch for 280. She's going to pitch down, catch that speed, and now we'll start pitching back up. And now we just want to make sure our throttles are fully where they need to be to give it all the juice. So we'll go at about 98% on the throttles. And actually there is a climb detent, which is right here. Which actually, we'll put it in there. Those engines are pretty strong. So let's bring it back to the climb and see how that treats her. To hold that speed, all she's going to do is just pitch back down. Because when we put it into full power, she, the toga power, she started pitching up like 4,000. That's too egregious. So we'll keep it in the climb right now, guys. We're just passing through 17,000 feet. And uh, we are doing good. We got our timer started. Now, for some reason, we are off course here. And I don't know why, but that's because we didn't go onto the nav. So that's probably my fault. So now all we got to do, honestly, so that we get on course again, is make ourselves be on course. Let's come back to the flight plan. And we're still going to be direct to the same thing. So we can redirect ourselves, guys. We don't have to follow that line since there's no ATC. So we're just going to come back in here. Mason City, that's what we want. Let's reactivate it. Now, from our current position, we're going to be direct from right here. Gives us a second to load. Now you can see we're direct from current location. There we go, guys. We're at 19,000, so let's go ahead and get our altimeter into the standard pressure. And there we go. Actually back on course now in the GPS, so that little mishap was my fault. Captain Maul is in the house, man. Big up to you, Captain Maul. Thanks for checking in, you guys. And, of course, as always, thanks for riding along, man. I'm pretty sure we can get rid of these flight controls for the time being. And uh, let's see, pulse border can come off. And let's get those flight controls off. Boom. There we go, guys. We are up and at him on this Sunday. Thanks for riding along with your boy. We are headed down to Omaha, Nebraska, to Epley Field. And uh, say again, last calling aircraft.
So we'll stay here humbly. We're just trying to... Uh, and actually, this switched over to mock, which I didn't want it to do just yet. There we go. We're climbing about Mach 6.5 the rest of the way up so that we can keep some nice forward speed there. Yes, you can. Miss Oatmeal says, can she get out of her seat? You know what? Look, I don't even think there, we don't even have a seatbelt sign on it, but we do. It's off. Look, see, you could have been off your seat the whole time. We didn't even arm belts on because that's how gangster we are in this flight. All right, we're raising it out a little bit. We'll let it load that last little bit. Sometimes it takes a while to load once you range it out because it's got to load more stuff in there. So we'll give it a second. That's right. Nice. That's right. We was breaking the rules. Like we said, no rules on this bad boy. Still loading, so you got to give it some time to load the rest of the stuff in there, or we could just come back one. Sometimes it freezes up. All you got to do is hit the flight plan, and we'll just let it do its thing. Sometimes this thing messes up when you range it out too far. Okay, let's see what we got it ranged out now. 200 miles, that's cool. We'll range it at about two. That's why it took so long. It had to load the rest of the stuff, and this ring here is at 50 nautical miles around us. So that's cool. That way we can see our route because we are still quite a bit of ways away from the first waypoint. Which if you come in here and see, we have 186 nautical miles to the first waypoint. And we're at uh, 263. 264 now on the flight level, guys. Let us go ahead and <laughs> huh. love it when there's no rules. Warden status can be relaxed. Play. That's what I'm talking about. No rules is best. Most of the time, even though we got to follow them some of the time. You know what I mean? All right, y'all. Let's go ahead and get rid of anything Duluth related because we don't need it, man. And honestly, the next thing we'll be needing is this. And while we're in route, we can put our situation in there so we don't forget. So let's actually see what that was. We need 111.15. We're also going to do 111.15 down here as well. And the nav too. So there you go. And then we'll just select it for back up top. She's flowing smooth, guys. Green light is rolling along, guys. So big up to you, green light. And uh, our final cruising altitude is flight level 360. So as you can see, the mock is dropping and dropping. So we can kind of up that mock. Let's get our inset down here ranged out. This is only ranged eight miles, so we're not going to range it out as far as the other one. But we can range it out. Uh, let's range it out 20. So now we can also see kind of stuff within our 20 mile range. And actually, you know what? Let's maybe do 40. And we'll do 30. We don't want to mess with it too much. So we can kind of see what's around us for 30 miles on this inset, which is pretty nice too. Here's our ground speed. And once we get into the flight, we'll also take a look at what weather uh, information that we do have on board. Okay, this light under here is kind of bright. I 
There we go. Turn that down a little bit. And maybe back up. There we go, y'all. And once we get up to a nice cruise, we will most certainly uh, be checking a few things out. Now, let's get back in here. Okay, so we have the right side. Okay, that's the right side. Okay, so we need to assign a right side to 18. Greenlight says, Gio, you bring that truck home, man. Gio says, man, he'd have the cops at the door waiting on him if he did. Okay, so let's add another camera, guys. We're going to call this next one 18. And now, perhaps, we can see what other type of view we can get here from the other side. Alright y'all, so that's a pretty nice view if you ask me. So now let's check our sides. We got that side. We got that side, guys. Man, we doing some things, man. We doing some things, guys. Thanks for flying along, guys. We are at uh, flight level 330. Not much to go. Pick up a little bit of speed on this last little bit of our climb. And uh, we're good. Let's go ahead and start doing our pressurization checks here, guys. Okay, here's our Delta P, 8 PSI. No rate right now. And uh, the cabin rate right now on the inside is 6,600 feet. So that's the pressure that's felt inside the cabin, which is uh, very good. We don't want the spoiler open and it's closed, which is another good thing. And uh, yeah, guys, we are rolling right along, man. Rolling right along. <laughs> All right. Almost there, guys. Hmm. Ain't nobody above making some money now. Shoot. <laughs> you guys crazy, man. All right, y'all. Let's keep this thing popping, man. Hope everybody's weekend has been copacetic. I hope a lot of you. Uh, I did. I responded, Gio. <laughs> to Telefonico. <laughs> I did, Gio. I responded. <laughs> you probably just didn't get it yet. Uh, okay, you got it. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> you crazy, man. All right, guys. Not much longer to go. Less than 2,000 to go. And let's get a quick time check here. We can come back down here to the time reference to see the clock is still should be ticking. We've been wheels up 17 minutes and 56 seconds, guys. We making it happen, man. All right, 1,500 to go. Once we get to 3, 4, 5, then we can pick up the speed. We can definitely pick up the speed for sure, y'all. Man, that's some beautiful scenery out there. All right. Let's take a look at the last bit of our climb so that we can adjust our speed. 
then we'll get our in route flight information together and we'll see exactly where we are at less than five to go guys So we're going to let it pick up a little bit of speed. You can see that bar coming up. And then once we do that, we'll put it into cruise power. So we're just letting her pick up a little bit more speed. And we'll pull back on the power. And we will officially be a cruise. Now it also has kind of like this cruise detent down here, but I always go just a little bit above it simply because we'll start dropping speed. So we want to make sure that our speed pretty much balances out. We're just right above that detent. And I do want to pick up a little bit more speed before we get, I want to go as close as possible uh, to the barber pole there guys green light says uh captain g says ella dre i'm thinking about that big girl running after the hot dogs oh man you guys man geo sent me something on facebook it was hilarious man it was just, it just wasn't right uh it just wasn't right <laughs> it just wasn't right <laughs> geo you silly Green light says everybody in the hood better watch out for them boys looking for them trash uh, trash bars full of cash. That's what I'm talking about. Trash bags full of cash, baby. Uh, green light too much. Uh, says Warren, how are you and the girls doing? How's my guy? All right. Now you guys see we're kind of at that speed where I want us to be. So now we can come bring that power back closer to the cruise. And let's just monitor what it does to our speed. It's still, okay, there he goes. It's starting to come back just a little bit. And if it goes between three and two, that's fine. Okay, still kind of picking up a little bit. Remember, there's no auto throttles on this bad boy. There we go. So there we go, guys. We pretty much achieved it. This is only going to pick up a knot or two at best. We are in that cruise power. And uh, you can see the winds right now are definitely uh, coming off the uh, wing at the, from the right side at 107 degree knots. And uh, that's because we're traveling south. So the winds always come from the west as a jet stream. So that makes perfect sense on the winds aloft. And you can see the airplane is yawing on its course in order to stay to adjust for those winds that are coming right off the right wing. And as you can see, that speed is balanced out right where we want. Even though we don't have auto throttles, this is a comfortable place for me. If it does touch the barber's pole, all we're going to do anyway is get a little bit of a warning. Let's go back in here. This is the last one we didn't put into standard. And there we go, guys. There we go, guys. Let's, uh, now we can get some information on our top of descent to see exactly what we're looking at. Flight plan, top of the sense in 24 minutes, but not really, because that's at a two and a half degree, so it'll be shorter than that. So I'm gonna ask for three degrees. And there we go. So it'll re it'll recalculate for us to be at 16,000, and you can see uh, it's got us at 25 minutes now, actually, because we're we decided to be at three degrees, this is a, a, a two degrees. Now we can also uh, come over here and we should be able to manipulate the target that we want. It 
and see it gives us back to that 3.5 or a 2.5 so when we get closer it'll let us know what that is so don't worry about it it's still going to calculate the time but we want it at 3 degrees not 2.5 degrees guys so that's how you kind of work the v-nav in here and i'm going to still be doing it myself the v-nav here is still a little bit sketch but at least it will uh have me follow all of the uh the cues that i need needed to follow don't forget once we get to link we're going to be going direct ovr so i'm just going to leave this for the time being highlighted on ovr which is the uh omaha uh VOR. So 24 minutes, guys. And you can see that speed is right where we want it, guys. So we are cruising. Mr. Kilo Mill says, all doing super good. Thank you. I'm a stay-at-home mom working, uh, working mom thing, pulling my hair out. I know how that is, man. Trust me, guys, I was a stay-at-home dad with my kids, too, man. My wifey was going out to get it a few years ago, so I know about that life. I know about that life. So we're up and cruising now, guys. Nothing to worry about it. We got about 20 minutes until our top of descent, we'll say roughly. So when this is, uh, essentially when this is about 1300 or 1305, that's when it's due for the top of drop. Let's go back into our trusty uh, wing view and let you guys see it just like that. We are cruising, man. Let me check the old VATSIM network. And any station is snap radio check -off. We'll see if green light's still close enough. He might be a little bit far farther. All right, guys. We are cruising right along. Of course, what time is it? 846 talk to a green light here in a minute and see if we are actually going to be doing another leg or not again hope everybody's uh weekend is going well so far man hope every i hope there's a lot of people off tomorrow Warren says, imagine trying to work while stay-at-home parenting. Nanny comes tomorrow, though, and I'm counting hours and minutes until she's here. Oh, man. Whew. I know about that life. That's all I can say, man. I know about that life. I do. Bacazado says, we have a second leg. Potentially, Bacazado. Here in a second, I might step away and go use the restroom briefly. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to see if we're going to do a second leg or not. I'm assuming that we probably will because like I said in about 20 minutes we're gonna start descending and uh, get in so maybe we'll see how that goes and then maybe we'll uh, let me see exactly where I might decide to do the second leg man let me do one thing as promised to you guys though because I did tell you guys that uh, we were gonna be checking out our route So as you guys can see the little mark there, uh, the aircraft traveling, that uh, we don't have far to go. We're really over Rochester, Rochester, Minnesota, which is past the Twin Cities now. And uh, we'll be most certainly dumping looks down into a little bit of Iowa and continuing our journey. Uh, so yeah, we're just passing this... Uh, Rochester area here then 
we're gonna go through Iowa. We're gonna be north. We're gonna end up being northwest of Des Moines, and then we bring it down in here to the Omaha situation. Yeah, so I just wanted to kind of share that with you guys. All right, back to the main screen we go. All right, cruising right along, guys, right along. Flight's pretty smooth so far. Omaha, Memphis, or Louisiana, maybe. I ain't got nowhere to be, so child, let's do it. K-M-S-Y. Is that Mississippi, y'all? K-M-S-Y. I don't know what K-M-S-Y is. New Orleans! check the map out Actually, man, I say we go into KDAL. If we're going to do something else, let's go to KDAL. Let me see if there's even any flights to book there. And that route is actually flown by a 737, it's 629 miles, if we went to KDAL, Omaha, Memphis, or Louisiana, well we're in, we're going to be in Omaha, Memphis, or Omaha to Louisiana, let me see that one, man, while we're making our executive decision here. We can even do uh, like Omaha to Lexington, Kentucky. Let me see what that flight looks like. Either that or Indiana. I'm thinking about Indiana, guys. I haven't flown into Indiana. I don't have scenery for... I got scenery for KDAL. I just don't have scenery for pretty much any of these other things you guys are talking about, man. Let me see some here. There we are. I'm still investigating, man. Let's go back up and check on the... Health of the aircraft, of course. 
But let's see what our TOD is. Uh, 15 minutes. We got TOD to length. So we're still doing good there, man. Oh man, we got nothing but cloud cover now. Bummer. Let's see here. Back over here, guys. So I'm thinking Omaha to Indiana, Indianapolis, Indianapolis, Indiana is what I'm saying. What about that green light? What about Omaha to Kine, Kilo, India, November Delta, that's Indianapolis. Should be a little over a flow hour flight. And I'm down with that one, man. I was trying to kind of look for some fields around there for private jets let's take a look here I've never even flown into Indiana, so I used to live there when my when I was a kid. My dad was in the military. We lived in Indiana for like six to eight months or something like that. I did part of my fourth grade there. Interesting enough, though, little field here. I like it a lot. See, we've got this cross runway here, which this aircraft can land on any of these bad boys. There's the FBO General Aviation Parking. There's the FBO. Looks like there's the uh, United States Parcel Service, UPS, or the uh, post office, I should say, USPS. Must be a big postal shipping route, I guess. The terminal is rather small. Here's FedEx. So this looks like a big cargo uh, situation here, which is utilized a lot here, I guess. So I'll be interested in landing in Indiana. So I think that's what I'm going to do, guys. If I'm going to do a second leg, we're going to go from Omaha to Indianapolis, Indiana. I kind of like that, man. Let me see what a flight plan looks like for that. But in the meantime, let me double check this. Eleven minutes. Okay, cool. So I'm just getting the uh, flight plan ready together now on the other screen for Indiana. And we're going to do coma to kind. Alternate is going to be Ch Ch Chicago, man. That is definitely an eastern route. So and we're doing 360 now. We'll do... Three five zero. Take us about five hundred pounds of extra fuel just to be on the safe side. Four hundred sixty-seven nautical miles. OVR Braille Jacks Jacks two.
Zachy D in the house, man. Zachy D in the house. Alright, let me look that up, green light. K-T-Y-O. Let's check that out before I decide on it. Let's check the aircraft out really quick. We did make a turn. Let's make sure we are on course. This thing has been known to get off course. The reason why it's doing that is because we had it ranged out, but we're under the range now. So that's kind of my fault. Let's come over here, guys, and take a look where we're at. Yep, we are now direct to FOD. And uh, again, what we're really concerned with, there we go. There's that mileage. Still got us out 200. So now we can kind of reduce that back a little bit. And let's also get the flight plan back up so we can see what our VNAV info is. And then now you can start seeing the target feet per minute for our three degree glide slope. We got eight minutes and 33 seconds until we get our top of descent, guys. So let's uh, take a look at this other field here before we make our final decision. Okay, so let me get rid of these guys here quick. Let's go back into the search. And he says, Zachy D, man, hope you've been well, brother. KT, is that YQ? KTYQ. Indianapolis Executive. Okay, this is what I think the Premier One driver does, the guy, the YouTuber. I was trying to think of that field too, green light. Let me look and see what the airport's looking like. That's a pretty short runway for this bad boy. I mean, you got to hit this thing going nice and slow. I know takeoff minimums for this thing is like 6,000 feet for this uh, jet 5,500. I think we can get her. We just got to land, no float. And uh, let me see what a flight plan looks like to there. So I just saved that flight plan we had as a, basically as a PDF. Come to the side. The sun in our eye. Now let me do a new flight. What green light's proposing, which is coma to K. What was it? K T Y Q. Ah, that's not what I wanted to do, man. Okay, the mileage for this one is 463 LMN. Let's do, do 15 not bad not bad at all okay so let's go back up now let's double check that top of drop five minutes cuckoo we'll get our V nav on here in a minute okay so four approaches ILS 36 bada bing let's see what the winds are doing there Winds, man, are 11, gusting 14. Ouch. 
Well, that's Indiana's known to be in that tornado alley. So 220 gusting 14. So basically that's closer to the southern runway. So we could do the R nav. 1-8. Three minutes, guys. So let's come up here as well. And let's get our bottom altitude set up. There we go. And then now, of course, we can hit the VNAV button up here. There's VPATH. So once the VNAV path comes on for us to descend. Essentially, we're going to do it and just use it for visual guidance because this thing still doesn't catch it like it should right away. So it's kind of weird, but we're going to use it visually, which I think is still just fine because this is more of a hands on aircraft anyway. No auto throttles, anything like that. So, all right, guys. So we are going to give that a go. Let me check you guys out in the chat. Bakazato says it's going to do a quick DC uh, 6 hops in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Exactly. It's his home airport, he says. Uh, okay, green light. That'll be it. <laughs> green light. Okay, green light. That'll be it, man. We're going to go to Indie Executive. And uh, it's going to be a full flaps landing in this thing. Um, again, let me, let me double check the uh, runway length and all that required for this bad boy. So I'm still questioning whether it, that runway should be good for that. All right, let's do something here. Something's happening here. Now we are direct from FOD to LANK. Don't forget, once we get to LANK, that's when we got to go direct. Oh, that's when we're going to go to the uh, Omaha VOR. Okay, we got a minute and 30 to go, so let's just focus on this VNAV descent right now. About at a minute, it should be coming through. there it is there's the required feet per minute so it's going to be about 1900 feet per minute is what it looks like so we'll get that armed and then we're going to wait for this carrot to come down we got 38 seconds and it looks like it's going to be more like 2000 feet per minute so we're at about 10 seconds. We'll pull back the power. And uh, we'll announce that we're out of flight level 360 descending on down, guys. And then we'll get ready for that joint. Okay, it's at 15 seconds. Let's pull that power out a little bit. You can definitely see that needle starting to come down, guys. There we go. So it's it's oops, it's asking for us to be at about 2000 feet per minute. We got ourselves about 2000 feet per minute, guys, on our own. And that's what I'm saying. I'm not relying on this for sure to be my one all be all for my vertical navigation profile. So we're right there. So we're pretty much on profile. Speed is looking good, guys.
Epley Field traffic, November 350, Kilo Tango's a Phenom 300, has vacated flight level 360, currently at flight level 341, descending via the length one, expecting a uh, full stop, uh, and we'll update the right away on the next call for uh, Omaha Epley Field traffic. All right, so the reason why we're going to update the field information again later is simply because we got to re-update our meta. Greenlight says it'll be enough. Okay. You guys heard the man. Greenlight says it will be enough. All right. Let's get the meta. Okay. Meta is uh, still the winds are out of 320 at 5 knots. And uh, the altimeter is 29 or 81. Temperature is 3 degrees outside. Warmer than uh, Minnesota, of course. All right, guys. So, if we go back to the flight plan and just re-verify what runway, we do have 3-2, and the winds are exactly out of 3-2-0 at 5 knots. So, that's a good choice, guys. Altimeter is 29 or 81. So, now, let us go back to... There you can see here we are on the arrival guys and we are direct to length and uh, we'll get that at 16,000 is the goal and then OVR we're going to try which is the Omaha VOR we're going to try to definitely get that at uh, doggone 2800 if not we'll welcome the procedure turn it's already planned in there for us so but we got 34.3 nautical miles so we'll be able to get her down guys. Then once we get on the field, let's also take a look at when we exit stage left. Okay, so we are doing uh, three, two right, 8,500 feet. So when we exit, we're gonna exit off to the right. If we don't make Yankee, we can uh, do Kilo to Foxtrot, or we could just do Zulu, because essentially we got a real, we got to get Zulu either way. So this that's really weird. Uh, kind of situation down here where those runways intersect. So we're keeping our icing situation on, guys. We can pitch up just a little bit now. And then once it gets back to 1900, and once this little arrow gets right here we most certainly can put it back to 2000 because right now it's still calling for eh, it's in the 19s it's a very slight disparity between what we're pitched down and what it's asking for so we're okay all right guys so so far so good and those winds aren't doing too bad they're only at five knots man so let's see if we have us a decent one a decent touchdown you know what i mean we definitely want a decent touchdown so let's put our next leg information in there while we're descending down in case anybody wants to fly with us Looking good, guys. We're getting a little bit of wind right there. There we go. Put some next leg information in there. So that'll be the next leg we're flying. If anybody's interested, Omaha on over to Indy Executive. 24,500.
Okay, yeah, so we're good to go because it can uh, take off maximum takeoff weight at 3,643 feet and then it can land at 3,700 feet. So we're also going to have to do, we're going to reference that same chart that we had at the beginning, but now for landing. Only this one is not so focused. This one's kind of focused more on the basics. Which is basically what weight you're at. So 8,500 is more than enough. We don't need to land at full flaps. We can do a flap three. Wing stab on. Uh, we're looking for a uh, V-Ref. We'll have to check our weight. Yeah, it's 37 degrees there, so we're going to, we are, so there isn't any freeze on there, so we're going to plan for a landing with no icing. Right, okay, so landing, now let's check our weight, guys. Then we'll get ready to get that, uh, so our weight right now is, uh, 74.23. So right at 74, so flaps 3, V ref is 115. And at that weight. VFS, yep, is right at 130, so that's good. And climb out speed would be uh, 7400. Climb out speed is actually 118. Yep, and our landing speed is going to be 120. All right, guys, let's get that altimeter in there as promised. Altimeter for Epley Field is 2981. Okay, 2981 is in there. And again, winds are out of the uh, 320 degrees of five knots. Temperature is three degrees Celsius or 37 degrees Fahrenheit. And we'll take it runway 32 right. We'll be exiting stage right. Whatever that looks like, guys. Okay, so from length, then we'll be direct to OVR. So that means we need to get 2800 up in there. Bring her home with a butter, Dre. I'm going to try. No promises. Alright, now we're going direct. We shouldn't be going direct to vector. Now we should be going to OVR. So let's activate that. Okay, now we're going direct to OVR. And that's in 33 nautical miles. And for the 3 degree glide slope. Okay. 
Let's pull back on that power. And let me get the flight cams on for you guys. He said it's kicking like a Shaolin monk up here. It is, man. I felt some of that wind too, man. I for sure, I promise you, I did. All right, there we go, guys. And uh, Epley filled traffic over 350 Kilo Tango now at 14,700 descending via the Lank 1, expecting full stop runway 32 right for Omaha Epley filled traffic. All right, guys, it's getting real. Flight controls are on. Music's going to come off. And uh, yeah, let's start. So we said our V ref is 120, or our V approach is going to be 120, guys. Now, one thing that we need to do once we get here, don't forget if we don't need the procedure turn, which I don't think we will, we're going to need to be going direct to this beef right here. And then, of course, we need to make concessions to be in the navigation mode so that we can pick up the ILS, which we already have programmed at 111.15. And there's a course heading of 231, but we can fix that up as well. That's the current course. We actually have to put in the approach course. Final approach course, guys, is 322. So here's what we're going to do. Let's square up that heading. So we got OVR and 29 nautical miles. 28 now. Let's pull that speed back slightly. Okay, we're now in the heading mode. Because now what we have to do is come change our CDI to localizer 1. And we need a course heading, guys, of 322. So there's our final approach course heading, guys. 322. Now we can come back over to the GPS. Actually, you know what? We also want to just back this up too. We got both the ILSs redundant. All right, back on GPS navigation. And we can do those landing lights coming on now. We're passing under 10,000. And all the way back on the speed. We've got uh, a little bit to get there. So we may actually uh, let it go into the procedure turn. So we got 13 miles to descend down another 7,000 feet. Let's see if that spoiler wants to come out on us. Okay, there's that spoiler coming out, so we can slow down a little bit. Spoiler's coming back in. There we go, guys. Give ourselves a little bit more time to get there. Which 10 nautical miles, we're at a disparity of uh, 5,000. So just under, but we could get there, guys. We're going to pitch down a little bit more. And we're also going to be using those speed brakes. Spoilers out. And if it gets us down to 180, that's fine. And once we get here, we'll do our right turn to beef and we'll be lined up. Omaha traffic, November 350 Kilo Tango is on a right base for runway 32 right. Currently uh, direct to the Omaha VOR, expecting full stop runway 32 right. All right, guys, landing lights are on, of course. We should be, we only got 7.2 nautical miles to where we need to be, so I don't foresee us even needing that, so we're going to hit the direct button to the second beef.
I'm getting the actual heading on there as well. Got about five nautical miles, and then as soon as we get there, we're going to do our heading. We'll do heading mode, and then I'll get the uh, course switched over so we can get the approach mode on. Speed is looking good uh, based off of our pitch. Look, we got three miles, and we're going to probably make that 2,800 feet, no doubt. So we're about to be really good here. All right. And we can go one stage of flaps, basically. There we go. Keep ourselves nice and slow. Okay, now what I'm going to do, guys, let's go... Uh, go heading mode okay now we're gonna go down to the CDI all right now we're gonna start making our turn and it actually is making a turn the wrong way so we're gonna spin all the way around which is just fine Basically because of how we did it, it decided to make its own turn based off of what we wanted, but that's all right. We're staying right here at 2,800 feet. Omaha traffic, November 350, Kilo Tango, completing a uh, procedure turn will be inbound direct to Beef for full landing and complete stop on runway 32 right, Omaha traffic. Okay, so let's remember beef is supposed to be at 2800 as well. Okay, what's going on here? Should be giving me the ILS here, guys. I don't know what's going on here. Ah, it switched. Okay, now we should be intercepting that localizer here in a second. Okay, I do see the field. Don't forget our approach speed is one... Yeah, we're going another stage of flaps. Our approach speed is actually, uh, come on, localizer, let's capture you, man. I got the field right there. We got beef in Okay, we got the localizer guys and we're almost at beef I don't understand how we're above the glide slope okay we're way high so we're just gonna go around
All right, we'll keep our altitude right here. So no worries, guys. We're just going to do right bases. Uh, so we'll do a right base. Omaha traffic number 350 Kill Tango is currently at 5,400. We will be going miss and going around to re-enter the pattern for runway 32 right. Uh, and we'll be calling our turns for uh, Omaha traffic. All right, guys. So a little bit of confusion on the way in, man. But no worries. We're where we still need to be. We're on the localizer, of course. So let's get back into the heading mode, which we are, and let's get our altitude. We'll do, uh, and we'll do about, uh, oops, 4,200. Speed is picking up there a little bit. Let's pull that back. Yep, so if you're getting flustered when you're coming in, guys, just remember, you can just do it again. You can see now we're passing over the field. Let's declare our view so that we have a nice copacetic view. And so literally we're over the runway, so we're just going to spin it back around and do it all over again. Now we have... Nice visual reference of what we're going to do, guys. So let's get past that runway because we're literally flying over it right now. Omaha traffic. November 7, one Charlie Hotel Citation Jet will be crossing Omaha on the OR at 4000. We'll be <coughs> proceeding outbound on the 230 radio and we'll be doing a downwind to base for Island's runway 36. Omaha traffic. Okay, we're going to be here at 4,200 feet here in a second, so we should start pitching up. And now we're past that localizer, which is good, guys. Pull that power up, and let's make our right turn. There's our right turn, guys. Right now, we are currently at flaps two, so we're landing flaps three, guys. The V ref of 115, V approach of 120. Okay, guys, we've made basically our 90 degree turn. Thank you, Bacazato. All right, let's go over to the first officer side, take a peek out. There's that field off to the right, of course, guys, as you see there. So we'll bring it out a few more seconds and then we'll do our right downwind. Okay, let's do our downwind turn. And uh, Omaha Epley Field traffic, number 350 Kilo Tango is now right downwind for runway 32 right. And uh, we will monitor incoming aircraft for runway 36 and report our right base turn uh, for Omaha Epley Field traffic. All right, so we're doing good on the speed. We're just right below that barber's line so we can maximize our speed and not be too crazy. Omaha traffic. Citation chain November 7, one Charlie Hotel is over Omaha BOR, outbound on the 230 radio 4000. Omaha traffic. Okay, so he's outbound. So if we go and take a look exactly where he's at, here's the Omaha, and he's on the outbound uh, radio. 
uh, which I believe we can come and take a look at that right here. So, and it depends. I, I got to remember what radio he was talking about just because he's landing on runway 36. So, uh, you can see our profile. We're perfectly downwind. And now we're going to go ahead and descend to 2,800 feet, guys. That way we can get this thing right this time. 2,800 feet. Bada bing, bada boom. Let's go ahead and pull that power back slightly. There we go. And let us get it in, man. Appreciate you guys riding along. Let's pull that speed way back. We're about to exceed our speed, so you always got to keep a sharp eye on that, guys. Here in a slight moment, we'll be at 2,800 2, feet. We're going to make sure that we definitely uh, get our localizer rearmed and stuff and have a better approach. Okay, so he's almost going to be hitting our same one. So once we get past, we'll be just fine. Which, uh, if you come down here, man, you can see that. Uh, let's range it. So we're well past the runway, which is good. And he's on a heading of 178, which is pretty much our same direction. So there's 3236 is this runway right here, guys. So at no point should we be impacting each other as long as we're not coming down at the same time. At the exact same time, which is not going to be the case. Okay, we have a uh, achievement of 2,800 feet. Omaha Apple Field Traffic on November 350 Kilo Tango will be turning uh, right for right base for runway 32 right expected full stop go guys let's power up a little bit and we're going to keep it nice and slow because we want him to get in we want him to do his turn the final first Omaha happily field traffic number 350 kilo tangles on a right base for runway 32 right currently at 143 indicated on the airspace at 2,800 for empty field traffic. Okay, see, there's beef right there. That's where we were supposed to be at 2,800. And another part where we were looking at why we were so high was at this next point. See, 28 down here. So we needed to... So basically, this is where we're going to pick up the ILS right now. So uh, we're going to start making our turn here in a second. Actually, we can start making a turn now. It's not what I wanted. I wanted the approach. Okay, localizers, capture guys, and the glide slope. Omaha Epley Field, November 350, Kilo Tango is turning right to final. Half captured the localizer, expecting full stop runway 32 right. All right, guys, there's the runway we're coming over to. Let's go ahead and drop our gear and go to flaps three. Good thing is we did catch the glide slope. And now she's going to straighten herself out. And don't forget final approach speed. Okay, landing gear is down. Flaps are set to three. She's coming over. 
Getting ready to get that localizer and then we'll go off guys and have ourselves a landing. And because of my mishap, hopefully, like I said, green light, hopefully he's on a, was on a longer downwind. All right, there we go, guys. She's straightening herself up. Omaha traffic. Citation Jet 7 with Charlie Hotel is fully established on the ILS runway 36. Omaha traffic. Gears down, three green flaps. Autopilot. Autopilot's off, guys. Here we go. Omaha traffic, November 350, Kilo Tango, short final for runway 32 right. Speed is looking good. All right, let's pull back on that power a little bit. So we don't want to be too swift. 400. Check. Landing. Glide slope is good. We've been reestablished. Glide slope. Butter. Spoilers are out. Little bit uh, windy on the way in, like I'm doing left rudder right now. And we're doing our rollout, which is fine. We'll be past. Here's the runway we need to pass. Incoming traffic. Uh, November 350 Kilo Tango still on runway 32, but past runway 36. You are clear to land, sir. All right, guys. Roger. Roger. Okay. Wheel brakes coming on. Spoilers in. Flaps up. All right, guys. Welcome into Epley Field. Now, we most certainly cannot have a landing like that in uh, the next field we're going to simply because this aircraft, I don't know, man. I'm, and it might be me. It's definitely me. It's going to be pilot error. Okay, we're looking up top. Strobe's off. Landing off the taxi. Let's get that uh, taxi chart up. And of course, let's go really slow now. We got to get the time off. Okay, there we go. Time is off. And we are on Zulu. Epley Field traffic, number 350 Kilo Tango, clear runway 32 right on Zulu. We'll be taxiing uh, to the ramp via Zulu Lima for Epley Field traffic. All right, so when green light calls it out, we'll get out and take a look and see where he's at. But welcome in. Bacazado says, nice landing. SA, butter, butter. Green light says, woohoo. And that's what it takes, guys, sometimes not to just rush that go around. I mean, not just to rush the landing on the field. But to actually get in there and uh, do what's necessary. Okay, now this is the next runway. And there's green light there. So we'll just kind of hold short here as if we really would for incoming traffic. And Epley Field traffic number 350 Kilo Tango is on Zulu. We'll be holding short to runway 36 for incoming traffic. All right, so let's go ahead and hold here. That parking brake. Let's get outside. I 
And there's green light. I don't know why it's not showing wheels. It does that sometimes, though. So they still need some help with the CSLs. Great work, sir. Great work, sir. We know you got wheels, but it's showing you don't have wheels. So it looks like he made it. He's off to the right. And it's just not modeling the wheels, whatever, so oh, they need some help. November 7, one Charlie Hotel is clear, right there, runway 36, taxiing on Sierra. Okay, Epley Field Traffic, number 350, Kilo Tango on Zulu, will be merging with Lima, taxiing uh, down to the ramp, and great landing there, no, no, November 7, one Charlie Hotel, great landing. Thank you, thank you, sir. Roger that, roger that. Alright guys, so we're going to continue on this according to the chart. We're going to cross this runway, take a ride and continue our way down. Then we'll be getting into some replay, guys. Look left, it's clear. He's off the runway, that's clear. Landing lights on, strobes on. Strobes back off. Lights back to taxi. Omaha traffic, November 7, one Charlie Hotel will be crossing. We'll be taxiing via Mike crossing runway <coughs> 32 right. Omaha traffic. So thanks everybody for riding along on that first leg. We're going to go ahead and taxi it in, guys. And get some replays, man, and then get reconfigured for our next leg. Hopefully, X-Plane will make it the whole next leg. But if not, guys, guess what? We have one leg in. I think on the next one, it's going to be full flaps landing, and we have to hit the touchdown zone for sure. It's a must. It's an absolute must that we do. Absolute must. Now when we get here, we're not going to connect the GPU. We'll just turn it off. And uh, even if the batteries run down, we do have the GPU. We could do a GPU start. But because sometimes on the replay, what happens is... It leaves the GPU connected, a door open or something on the replay. And it doesn't look good for you guys, man. So, guys, welcome uh, to Omaha Epley Field. I believe this is Vertical Sims' uh, situation here. Once we get on the replay, I'll get rid of myself as well. We'll get the replay, and then we'll get ready for our next flight. Finally, his wheels are showing up, so he is—he does have wheels now. He's over there at Signature, which is where we need to go as well. That is where the private jets go. Make our own taxi way up here so we can come around him.
All right, guys, so we're going to do replays. Hey, honey, my daughter's in here. She loves what daddy to give her the attention. We're going to do some replays, guys, and then we're going to mess around and uh, get ready for that next leg of the Indy, and that ought to be a very interesting landing. Uh, just simply because I really have to nail it. This thing really is... There's no reversers. It's just a spoiler. Which I thought we had took down. I just took it down now. Do some formation parking here, guys. Market brake is set. Okay, taxi lights are off. We'll leave the nav on. And of course, now we can stop those engines. And let's come up here and get our transponder off, guys. Of course, we're going to get that to standby. And welcome to the Omaha Epley Field, guys. Man, we made it with no delay. Actually, there was a little bit of a delay. That was me uh, trying to figure out that uh, final approach there. But the biggest thing was that we most certainly made it in safely uh, and somehow managed to snag us a butter. So welcome it in, guys. And we're going to do this replay. Let's make sure we're off the network. And November 7-1 Charlie Hotel, we're going to bust a couple of replays and then we'll be back in to get ready, suited and booted uh, for our trip to uh, Indian Executive. All right. So. No problem. I need to reset the airplane anyway and then I'll check my flight plan and then uh, we'll go right back in. Roger that, brother. Roger that. All right, guys. So we may do that as well. I don't know if I'm going to reload X-Plane altogether. Maybe we'll just keep the aircraft. But in the meantime, let's disconnect from the VATSIM network and get right into this bumba clot replay All right, she was on her way in. You can see we were doing our best to keep that profile after uh, struggling to get on the profile. Man, but we did. We just have to be patient and take our time, guys. Incoming, incoming, guys. Appreciate you guys riding along on that first leg for sure. Actually, the first time I've flown this route, I think I've flown into this field one time once I got it because it is from Vertical Sims. But I haven't flown it in a while. Definitely have. I think this might even be my first butter in this aircraft. Not because I can't, just because I don't fly it a whole lot. There's so many different aircraft that I enjoy flying that it's hard to kind of stick to one, man. So here we go. 
I know we floated it, which we definitely cannot do on the next one, or we gotta go around. There's that butter, just barely touching her down. Very nice, very nice, fam. And we had our spoilers out. I don't know for whatever reason why it doesn't model those spoilers. That's kind of crazy, man. Let's back her up. Kind of see the profile from the front. Definitely was way left of center. But there's that touchdown. Not too far from the blocks. There we go. Try to line it up to get it on center. And we kind of let the speed beat naturally. Again, on the replay, I don't know why she doesn't uh, model the uh, actual spoilers, which we did have out. Not tripping no long as they work when we needed them to work. I uh, held that nose up a little bit, then boom. Trying to get her situated. All right, man. We did a fabulous job. Fabulous job, guys. Fabulous job. Let's do a couple of wing replays, and then we'll be done with it. Then we will be ready for the next adventure. Do a little bit of a longer little wing replay there. Let's figure out which window we're going to do it from. All right, here we go, guys. Ride it out to this uh, wing replay, and then we will most certainly get ready to get the next leg. I'm going to take a quick break, so we'll let it ride all the way out until we get to the ramp, and I'll be back with you. Thanks for riding along, guys.
guys let's get back to it we are done with the replay we're not going to reload anything we're just going to have x playing on a prayer and a wish hopefully we don't get a crash but we did complete one leg and if we get a crash then we at least got one in the show boink boink let's go ahead and get all of our stuff going back again bada bing bada boom we've got everything updated the flight plan has also been refiled so we were extremely busy uh, while you guys hopefully were enjoying that replay let's go ahead now and simulate that uh, we got the GPU on and all that stuff so let's let's do this man so let's open that GPU panel get that on as well as open the passenger doors there we go and let's make sure that we are connected to the ground power now it's in use so we can keep those batteries charging right up guys and let me go ahead and also update my active sky it likes to be kept in a loop as well guys so there you go And let me see, it is Kilo Tango Yankee Kilo. Hmm. Let's do coma. It's Kilo Tango Yankee Quebec. I guess I didn't like it in lowercase. All right, so we've got that situation going on. We'll get our meta information back on and let's get out of here, guys. This doesn't have to take long at all. Okay, you can see everything now is on the external power. You can see the GPU is connected here. That's what's providing the electrics to this bad boy. All right, let's get back into the flight plan. And of course, now you know we gotta delete it. All right, now let's get right into our first waypoint, guys. First waypoint is a VOR, it's Lima Mike November. Lamoni. All right, there's Lima Mike November. Then we're going to Skabaz. Then from Skabaz, we're going to go to Phoebe. There goes Phoebe right there, folks. Let's go ahead and enter that bad boy. And VHP. Which is Brickyard. And then from VHP, we're doing Kilo Tango Yankee Quebec. to that and uh, so now we know that the winds we might do runway 36 let's see here then we'll get our V speeds well first of all let's get our fuel we need to be about 3208 on the fuel so let us make that happen Thirty-two fifty-eight, close enough. We're still all in. So there's thirty-two fifty-eight. All right, runway length is long enough. We just need to uh, 
And it'll be a flaps one takeoff for sure, guys. I don't think we need any icing on this time, which brings me to my next point here. Turn the icing off, which we never did. Shame on us. And this time we can do uh, icing, no icing situation here. So that would work just fine for us. Okay, so flap one dry runway. Let's get the temperature, guys. And November 7, 1 Charlie Hotel, are you up on the net? The net? Okay, winds are out of the north. Okay, so we're currently here. We look at runway 36, which is 8,154 feet. Um, that's actually, well, let's look what our first heading is at anyway. So let's come over here really quick and we can actually cycle through this thing. So let's do just that. Okay, so this is Tacoma. All right, now that's the heading 114, so that's pretty much southeast uh, on our departure. So if we leave north, that'll be a right turn uh, to the southeastern uh, heading, basically of 114. So that's exactly what we're going to do. So let's put in the heading of, uh, we'll say, uh, do another 15 degrees. We'll do about 130. This time I got to remember to put it over to the GPS. So we'll be on a heading of 130. Of course, let's get this bad boy now. Uh, go back here. Let's get the CDI back onto the GPS. There's the GPS. And uh, Coma is the first waypoint, but we will go direct to this joint. Uh, matter of fact, we can just go ahead and do it now. So there we go, we're gonna take off north, we're gonna do a right turn. So we'll keep that on heading right now, which we're gonna do runway heading more than likely. So 36, we'll just assume it's about 360. And of course, let's check that runway 36, 36, 358, so we were close, close enough. 358. Our cruising altitude for this leg is going to be 35,000 feet. And let's look at our landing situation. And I'll check you guys out in the chat, man. See what's happening. Bacazado says, let's get his second leg. Yes, sir. And just landed in the DC-6. Negative 360 forgot to bring out the flaps. Hey, you still made it, Bacazado. So that's the important thing right there, my G. You still made it, SA. All right. So, boom, boom, boom. Uh, into Indian Executive. The winds are basically out of the south at 200 knots. I mean, 200 degrees at 7 knots. Altimeter is 3005. Let's get our altimeter on over here, too. Our altimeter here is 2981, which is still the same thing. So let's go to Indy Executive. And the runways we have is 18 and 36. So what do we have for 18? Okay, RNAV 18. Perfect. Now let me double check our right of our route of travel on uh, Sim Brief. That's going to give me an idea. Okay, so bada bing, bada boom. So VHP is actually going to bring us south of the field. And basically, we'll still be west of the field. So we are going to take this initial approach fix of Dieg or Ockel, whatever that may be there. Uh, for our 
situational landing okay so let's go here Bacazado says uh, yes sir I did but cargo ain't happy broke a couple of vases hey they better have been insured Bacazado that's all I can say they better be insured on any flight I'm doing because I probably have the same result procedure is going to be an approach and we are doing obviously this let's do this R nav with lateral navigation and vertical navigation and uh, we said that we're going to do see there's aquila out there so it's either aquila or, or the egg sickle die egg there's aquil so aquil is about 13 more nautical miles out this is the initial approach fix here Let's do Aqua, but then that'll include this in there, too, is what I like to do. So in case I want to make a decision for an extended anything, we could do that. So let's do it from Aqua, guys. See, we're going to be turning in, and there's Aqua. Because we're going to be coming from this direction up here, guys. So let's uh, also... We'll leave the barrel because we can fix that. Now let's also do our flight plan again and let's cycle through it guys and see what it looks like. Okay, there's Aquil. Let's see, there's VHP right there. And let's see if we can range this thing out a little bit. Okay, we can. It'd be nice if it showed Aquil, to be honest with you. So let's add that right here. We are... Let me see. I think if we go one here and type in Aquil. Okay, so that aqua kind of takes us way over there. So maybe we should be doing this diag right here. And I'm just doing this just so we can see the difference in how we want to set up the approach. Um, so that when we get there, we don't have that to worry about. So let's clear that out. Remove aqua, yes. And now let's put in uh, diag. Perfect. I like it. I can see it already. So I do like it, mate. So we're also going to come down here, guys. We're going to remove this. And there we go. So that's it right there, guys. So we'll at least be getting to go to Dieg and then it'll be right over. So I like it a lot. Now the only thing we need to figure out is at Dieg what the altitude is supposed to be. November 7, 1 Charlie Hotel, are you up on the net? And I'm not sure if he's flying with us on this next leg. It's kind of late, so he may or may not be. Uh... So Dieg can be at 3,000. So if we plan for Dieg at 3,000, that'll pretty much keep us safe. Uh, touchdown elevation here is about 1,000 feet, so that'll be 2,000 above. 
but we can we can put I'm glad we got the die egg in there so that can be um, yeah cuz let's see here once we turn right sub foes at 2700 see 3,000 four nautical miles so we need to be at 3,000 so we can plan for die egg at 3,000 guys Okay, so we're going to plan for Dieg at 3,000. VHP. Let's see, Phoebe. VHP. Then from VHP there. So we can probably hit VHP easily at, uh, we'll say, 6,000, maybe 7,000. see so if we're trying to drop three three times three is nine so that's only nine we got 20 uh, what time is in your sim uh, let's see green light I'll tell you right now green light it's exactly 1300 or 1900 uh, local time 1300 local or 1900 UTC my man so at VHP, let's try to shoot for. See, 8,000, that's the difference of 5, 15. So let's shoot for 9,000. 3 times 9 is 27, and we'll do 8. So between here, it's got 26 nautical miles. If we get here at 8, we need to be down here at 3 at Dieg. But not really all the way, because Sickle really needs to be at 3. If you come take a look at it, Sickle is really supposed to be at 3 as well. See that? Sickle's at 3. Subfo at 2700. So that is magical planning to our ears. Alright guys, let's go ahead and uh, button this thing up. And... The runway takeoff speeds at our weight. Oh, what was the temperature? Temperature here is two degrees Celsius. So 113, 113, and 120. Let's see, we're right at 79, that's eight. Yeah, 112, 112, 120. And our climb out speed is going to be still at 138 for flaps clean. We'll worry about the rest later, guys. Let's get the doors closed up. Well, let's go out and see if green lights loaded back in. Okay, there he is. At November 71 Charlie Hotel, I'm getting ready to uh, close everything up, spool them up, and get out of here. I'm going to be departing on runway more than likely 3-6 based off the winds. Alright, so let's get back over here and start closing everything up. Hi, honey. Daughter's back in here waving at me. Open, 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 which means it's all closed. Let's look at the taxi here that we're going to be worried about. Okay, here we are. Now we need to get to 3-6. Pretty easy. We're just going to taxi Lima across both runways. It turns into Echo. Then we'll be at the base of runway 3-6, guys. No big deal. And then we said on our initial turn... Heading 358. Okay, we're already direct to our first fix, and you guys can see that's basically uh, at a heading of basically 210. 
So we'll get that figured out so we know we're going to be doing a right turn. Okay, so there it is right there, guys. So you can see this is a southern heading. So really, yeah, this heading, there's east 90, uh, 100, 110. So yeah, if we turn right to a heading of about 135, we should be okay. See bearing one, so we said 125. We'll just get that now, fly runway heading, and then start making our turn manually. Let's do about 1.30. So there's our heading, guys. So again, taxi is going to be super easy. Bus stop out of here, get on Lima 1, Lima to Tango. Or actually, it's Echo, but it's reading Tango. So Lima... Tango Echo. So there you go. Okay, let's turn the music off. And let us get ready to get out of here. Thanks for hanging out, guys. Uh, and let's do a radio check. November 7 1 Charlie Hotel. This is November 350 Kilo Tango. Radio check over. Ah, uh, you know what? He probably is. Loud and clear. Part of that was my fault. I didn't have the earpiece in that gives me the audio for your uh, sound. So that was all my fault, brother. You close to getting ready to go? Hey, not a problem. I'm getting ready to load up my flight plan and be ready to roll. Okay, Roger that. I got a uh, departure on 36. Uh, we're going to be doing a right turn to about heading 125 to intercept the direct course to Lima Mike November. Then getting in uh, to the field, we're doing the RDAV for 18. How you looking? Yes, sir. 3,000 initial approach fix, and I'm taking that from Diac, so that'll pretty much put you on a nice downwind from your last VOR, because uh, it brings us in basically to the southwest of the field, and then we can turn left, go direct to Diac, and then that'll give us a nice base and a nice right turn to final. So, he's probably going to look at that. As I know, he's going to check me out, so we'll just give him a few more seconds to get on and popping. And we are going to reset the time. Now we can get back to the start. And let's make sure our transponder code is still 2200. Okay, so we'll go back. And yeah, let's make sure the doors are closed. And we out of here, guys. So we can, again, put the status on. Doors are closed. And let's double check our fuel stores. This is in kilograms. So there's the fuel 1478. So again, we got to go over here to ground. 1478 equals 3258. So that's more than copacetic. V speeds is 112, 112, 120. So we do have all that set up. We've got the altimeter in already. And uh, let's set up our vertical profile, of course. Since we're going right up to flight level 350. There we go, guys. And we'll be on the heading mode. And uh, once we get on that heading mode, then we can most certainly uh, put it on the GPS mode. Hopefully, I don't forget to do that this time, guys. If I do, shame on me. At this time, guys, let's make sure our nav lights are still on. Bird is back, filled up. We are ready to go. Uh, so let's go ahead and fire up the... Because uh, the, the GPU is actually out to the left if you come outside. So that's why we're going to fire up the right engine. So the GPU is out here. So we'll fire up the right engine, of course. Once it gets up enough, you're going to see this turn green as such. Now that it's actually doing its thing, we could get rid of the GPU. Close that GPU panel. We'll have the next engine starting up, of course. Stop. 
All right. So that test is complete. Everything else down here is the auto. And let's get our flap set, of course. And let's go re verify our trims. Normally, this thing likes to take off trims about seven something, so let's get it. And we'll do it right about eight, which is fine. And aircraft is up and started, guys, so we're good there. Let's go ahead and get that off there. Boom. Status panel looks good. And uh, we have our ECSs still on, of course. Where are they at? Hydraulics are still on. Bada bing, bada boom. And let's get our belts on. That way my daughter knows she's supposed to sit down. Cross feeds are on. Flaps are set, guys. We are ready to go. Omaha Epley Field Traffic, November 350 Kilo Tango will be taxiing uh, to runway 36 for a departure out to the south uh, via uh, Lima, Lima Tango Echo. Again, taxiing to runway 36 from the uh, signature parking ramp Lima Tango Echo for runway 36 departure out to the south for Omaha Epley Field. All right, guys. So we are good to go there. Everything is looking good. Flaps are down set. We'll get our timer started. Now let's don't forget to get our transponder on. So now we can get that bad boy back on just because ATC does come on and we'll start the clock once we get there. Oh, and uh, landing field elevation, of course, is kind of a little off because it should be uh, so it's decision height 1216. It says conditional, but let's go ahead and throw that in right now. And we'll figure the rest out in the sky. One, two, one, six, enter. All right, guys. Let us do this. Taxi lights are coming on. Taxi lights are on. Nav is on. Let's ride out, guys. I feel like my seat is a little off. There we go. Okay, parking brake is released. Again, we're doing Lima. And welcome aboard, everybody. This is November 350 Kilo Tango. Again, flying uh, just with family on board. All right, two nine or eight one, two nine eight one works for me. Okay, we'll be joining Lima now. Gotta slide out that dumb seat's getting in the way because of my view. So guys, we'll take off, try to keep runway heading for a hot minute, then we'll start our right turn. To pick up. Lima Mike November, which is 96 miles away from here. It's on a heading of 113. And then we're out of here, guys. Weather is looking very copacetic for flying today, guys. And, of course, I cannot be forgetting the flight controls. Free and clear. All right. We'll do our flight controls checks here once we make this turn. Okay, we are verifying both tow brakes are working. As you can see there. The tow brakes on the rudder. And uh, here we go. We're going to have to get our strobes on now. Strobes are on. 
landing is on because we got to cross some runways. Omaha Epley Field traffic, November 350 Kilo Tango is crossing runway 32 right on Lima. All right, strobes are all on, guys. That way we can get an official cross. Filled November 350 Kilo Tango now on Tango Taxiway has crossed over runway 32 right and we'll call crossing next runway for Omaha Epley traffic. Omaha Epley, tra Omaha Epley traffic number 350 Kilo Tango is on Tango now crossing runway 32 left. For continued taxi on to Taxiway Echo for departure on 36 right out to the south for Epley Field traffic. Okay, now we're merging on to Echo. So if we come over here and see that we're going to be bearing to the right a little bit, and then this will take us straight to the base of runway 36, guys. So let's get the taxi off and we can use the switch here to get that strobe off okay full up full down alien run right alien run left and flight controls are clear and free and complete Just looking that way, we don't get any seat involved in there. Let me see if I can fix that up really quick. X camera, all we got to do is save all cameras, toggle control panel, save that. And you know what? It didn't save because guess what? I moved it out of the view, duh. So it's going to be a problem again. Watch the seat's going to be there. Oh, maybe it didn't. Maybe it did save it. Okay, guys, landing light back on. Strobes back on. Epley Field traffic, November 350 Kilo Tango is now entering runway 36 for departure out to the south. We'll call clear of runway for Epley Field traffic. All right, let's go, guys. I just went ahead and started the time. All right, we'll see you in the skies, November 7, 1 Charlie Hotel. We're going to go ahead and go Toga now. Go Toga, sir, and I'll catch up with you shortly. Okay, roger that, man. We'll catch you on landing again. See you in the skies. And uh, Omaha Epley Field traffic, number 350 Kilo Tango, taking off now, runway 36, departure out to the south. Okay, takeoff power is set. percent confirmed and check airspeed is alive 80 knots don't forget v rotate is 112 and rotate nice and smooth up because we have went over our rotation speed there we go landing gear is coming up flaps up pull the power back a little bit Omaha Epley Field traffic, November 350 Kilo Tango is clear of runway 36 right. We'll be climbing out to the south for Epley Field traffic. All right, and actually, we went turning left following the flight director, but that's okay. We'll just continue our left turn. Completely did a left turn. We should have done a right turn according to our own self plan, but that's all right. We're just going to hand fly it for right now, guys. All right. 
Don't worry, guys. We're going to get turned around and on course. Just monitoring that power, bringing her around. And now we're actually going to go to a heading of this. November Kilo, Kilo Tango Hotel. Uh, what is your 7 cent for, sir? Uh, sir, I believe it was set for like 1300. I had responded into the stream. Maybe you weren't uh, there. I think it's like 1300 something uh, for the time, which is, I can't remember, it's local time 1300. Roger. All right, guys, so we'll pull back on that power. I'm still hand flying it, guys, just enjoying a little bit of hand flying situation here. Let's work on that pitch there, keep that speed copacetic. And let's let it fall right in. And then uh, once we get lined up good enough, we'll go ahead and activate the uh, autopilot. Okay, we're at 7,000. Still climbing with this bad boy. All right, we're on a good uh, intercept course, guys. Right there. Let's come up a little bit. And autopilot is activated. Now we can wait to 250 and we'll do flight level change. No matter how close you are to the trimmed up perfectly, it still does that little jump when you have autopilot on. So now we're right at 249 as far as uh, our flight level change speed. And uh, we are out of here, guys. Back up we go. Back up we go. Bump those flight controls off. And I uh, believe we can jump some type of tunage back on. Alright guys, we are past 11,000 feet, which means you know what, landing lights can come off. Everything is up and jolly. Let's come up front here and let us, let's see here, turn that time reference off even though we got that clock going, which is good. We are continuing our climb at our 250. Now let's manage our speed. We can climb a little bit faster than that. Now, once it turns to Mach, I gotta pay attention to that because I don't want—I want to climb at 280. Mach is gonna keep adjusting itself because the higher you go, the actual slower on the number indicated speed, not the Mach number. Uh, and so, what will happen is you'll be going down an actual indicated airspeed because the Mach number—the higher you get, the lower your speed to keep that Mach. But we don't want that. I want to stay at 280 indicated on. Uh, speed, not mock. Omaha traffic, November 7th, we're Charlie Hotel, Citation Jack will be taxiing via uh, Lima to Echo, Echo to runway 364, departure to the east on the Bluff 3 departure. Omaha traffic. Alright, so he took a departure and we just went straight up gangster style and went direct. Range that at about 20 for now. Continue on our climb, guys. And uh, looks like pretty smooth sailing here, guys. What we got out this wing is indicative of pretty smooth sailing here. Let's check the VATSIM scope. Yeah. Looks like it's going to be a pretty, pretty easy route.
funny thing is, is the indie executive, for whatever reason, is not even showing up. KTYQ Yeah, Kilo Tango Yankee Quebec Kilo Tango Yankee Quebec <laughs> It says unknown that sim doesn't even register it so uh, That's hilarious we got our flight plan in but it doesn't register. It let us do the flight plan, but it doesn't register that Kilo Tango Yankee Quebec. But nonetheless, the aircraft did. That's all that matters to us, man. And we got it in the sim. That's all that matters to us, man. Because clearly it's here. Kilo Tango Yankee Quebec. But it's not on that sim, so. Alright, so. Boom. Boom. Standard. And we'll keep it popping. All right. I caught it to where it switched to the Mach number. Aha. I caught you. There we go. We don't want no stinking Mach number just yet, guys. So then once we get to the top of our climb, guys, we will go ahead and take a look and see what the actual, actual top of descent time is, guys. And then we got to really focus on this landing. There is no, there is no room for any tomfoolery getting in there because I need to be nice and low hit those runway touchdown marks flaps full get her stopped easily you know i think at 80 knots i can go ahead and start doing wheel braking which is a good thing so we'll definitely have to do that i will break the lot le uh, later on the last touchdown just because we had more runway to save those brakes just to make sure we didn't get a flat tire or anything like that so uh big up to you guys for riding along man on this sunday night monday morning kids have no school tomorrow Gracias para el día de los presidentes, man. President's Day. So, there you go, presidents. Thank you for being presidents and giving us a holiday. Now, if we could get vice president holiday and speaker of the house holiday, secretary of state holiday. <laughs> just spread them out throughout the year. Just add more. Add more. Go ahead. It's okay. You know? Add more. It's no problem, man. All right. Okie dokie, let's switch songs here. And uh, guys, we are rolling up out of the Omaha, Nebraska area. Flight level 244 coming up on us. And uh, pretty smooth sailing here. We got green light auto brokers flying with us. You'll get to uh, the location slightly later. But that'll give us time to maybe do a replay before he gets there and have that done. And then do the last replay after he lands. But we'll see what the distance, the, the spacing is. So guys, you can see out there, the Midwest is doing what the Midwest does. And it's being non-mountainous, looking nice and flat. Looking nice and flat, 25,000 feet and ascending, guys. We got about 9,900 feet to go, folks. We do have a couple of waypoints set up for our vertical profile since we don't have any ATC. She is performing nicely, guys. And 280 is a safe enough speed that it, even once we get to cruise at 35,000 feet, we will not overstress the aircraft by overspeeding at all. 
And uh, yeah, guys, it's nice and clear out there. Now, if you guys didn't know, this thing has a bathroom that you can actually go into, which it's right between here. So let's open the door up and then let's go into the bathroom view, whichever one that may be. Okay, it's this one. Now we are in the restroom here, guys. So if you need to use the restroom on this private jet, it's got a bunch of fancy stuff up here. Nice flooring here. <laughs> and uh, you guys can close that door. And yes, love. Why somebody down here? Who's down here? Uh, you gotta go super bad. Yeah, but just give me a second and I'll go. Can you wait, man? Like two minutes, and I'll walk you. Okay. All right, give me a second. So I'll just siéntate un ratito. Thank you, baby. Anyway, this is the bathroom here in a second. Once we get to cruise, uh, yeah, you can actually flush the toilet. You can turn the water on. There's the water. Hopefully, you're doing that after flushing the toilet. Let's look the other way. Hopefully, you're doing that after doing this situation down here. So, that's pretty cool. And like I said, now you're back out. Hands washed. I'm surprised they didn't make these curtains close. Anyway, then you close the door back like a good, respectable human and go about your business with your clean hands. And that's what's up. Yep, that's right. My man Bakazada will be knowing all these aircraft, man. I'm going to start calling him the Aircraft Whisperer. He knows all the mods, all the features on it. That's what I'm talking about. That way you can help a struggling sim pilot like me out. All right, guys, you can see we're getting to our first VOR here, and then we're going to be doing nice eastern turn almost to a heading of 90 degrees it looks like uh to continue our journey over to indianapolis executive guys this airport you can really see folks fly into there if you guys are into watching the premier one driver he is a veteran himself he's a uh he runs his father's i think he took over his father's medical company he's got a premier uh, 1A aircraft, Beechcraft Premier 1A, and he's got his own YouTube channel called Premier One Driver. And I think his base of operations is out of uh, Indy Executive. So you'll see him landing there a lot of the times. It's a pretty uh, chill little airport because it's basically for GA and executive type private jets flying up in there. So there you go, guys. And uh, once we get to cruise here, I'll step away for a hot second. My daughter, we got several bathrooms in the house, but apparently she needs to go upstairs and use the upstairs one. So I'm gonna escort her upstairs. Even though she's five, man, I still get I still get very paranoid when any of my kids at that age are on the steps. But she's the youngest. She's actually getting ready to turn six, at the very end of this month. So I will no longer have any officially no longer have any toddlers again. Woo! A bit of a celebration in itself, even though, you know, we're still cherishing them at this age, man. But, you know, they grow up quickly and you got to accept each stage. So this is the next stage coming, man. And you can see it just turned itself back to mock again. So I'm turning it back to speed. We'll leave it right there. You got it? Oh, thank you, baby. And wifey came down to the rescue. And uh, I'm still going to get up to where we need to go and make sure she's all copacetic. And that's quite the view, guys. That's quite the view as we are uh, at 31,000, almost 300 feet now. Captain Gio says he is home now. The Bumba Clot made it home. Glad you made it home safely, Gio. And I see some weird tiling situation over here, which hopefully that's not uh, a loading issue. Okay, it looks like it fixed itself out. So there it goes again. 
And I think that has something to do with cloud layering or something from, uh, from X-Plane or from the Active Sky, but we're turning this way anyway, guys. And now I know that tiling thing is an issue. It's uh, basically, it did it the other day. It's active sky issue, really. When the clouds keep coming in and coming out, it'll do that weird tiling thing, but it, you know, it really wasn't an issue. And there you guys go. We are basically heading up straight east. Like I said, on the heading of 91 right now, guys. got uh, 2,600 to go. So now we're watching the speed and the cool thing is because we didn't let the speed get away from us now uh, we most certainly uh, are kind of where we want to be so that when we get ready to go into our cruise profile we don't have any catching up to the speed that we need to do because we're already there. We may have to adjust that slightly as we get a little higher. So let's pull back on that ever so slightly. Let's go to 270. Give ourselves a little bit of leeway just to make sure that we don't overstress the aircraft by overspeeding it. And then now, guys, let's come over here, man, and get rid of anything that has to do with Epley Field. We don't need it anymore, SAs. We don't need it, man. Just a little bit more to go until we are at our cruising altitude. Still monitoring uh, aircraft performance versus us getting closer here. Thousand to go, guys. Thousand to go. Alright, we went ahead and went into the Mach numbers now since we're pretty much there. So what this is going to do now to keep it Mach 77 so it'll decrease in speed just a little bit. And here in less than 300 feet, it's not going to matter anyway because we're just going to end up going into the cruise profile. Which we'll go ahead and do now. Let's go slightly over it. Okay, we are at cruise, guys, and we had a nice handover from our climbing profile into our cruising profile, and it looks like we're holding speed steady right here, guys. See that? We got 85% on the N1. I'm pretty happy with that, guys. We're right on the cusp. You can see, like I said, I put it pretty much here right where it's supposed to line up for max cruise, but just a little step over and it'll keep that speed right there. The only thing that can change this is winds aloft change somehow, some way. But uh, that looks good. As a matter of fact, we come back slightly because I see it creeping up a little bit. Want to give it a little bit of an opportunity to have a shift in the winds or something so that it doesn't push us since the winds are we're getting that jet stream you see that the winds are pushing us from the behind basically at 69 knots 
So there we go, guys. Let me double check the old map. Side there, guys. Alright, just to give you guys a little bit of an idea, there is our route, basically a mainly eastern uh, route uh, with a little bit of southernness to it as you can see there, basically southeastern route, again more east and south guys, we're basically right now on a heading of 90, which that's going to change, we're probably going to be more or less on like a heading of 100 or so here coming up shortly, and uh, we have met our cruising altitude here at flight level 350 green light says climbing through flight level 240 to 370 that's my man green light like i said we should have plenty of time to get there run a couple of replays maybe we'll gauge where green lights at and then get them on stream so we can see them have a great landing again guys and other than that guys we are chillaxing man so we don't have much further to go guys the uh, total flying time for this uh, leg today should be an hour and 15 minutes and if we go in here and check on our situation on our time we're at 24 minutes so we're definitely under an hour until touchdown let's say we're about basically at 55 minutes until we touch down or so something like that let's also come in and observe our top of descent so here's our top of descent right here, guys. Uh, right now we're at 35,000 feet. VHP is where we're planning our top of descent. And that's in, at, ooh, and it kept the, uh, I like it, it kept the profile. Negative 3, 23, 8,000 feet. And if you notice something, guys, this is pretty cool. It already has it in here. Now let's see if we're supposed to be making this turn. Okay, we're going direct to feed. There we go. Got to watch this thing every now and then. Oh, I, I, I unmapped the key for the autopilot, so that shouldn't be an issue anymore. So, guys, we have a few minutes until top of descent. We got green light in tow. All is calm on the VATSIM network, guys, and of course, we got our top of descent right here in 23 nautical miles. Let me see if I can get that VNAV information over here. I don't think I can get VNAV information over here. Let's, let's see what we can get. Yeah, no VNAV over here, guys. Traffic top, uh, yeah, no VNAV here, but that's okay. Let's range this one out, too. Range that out to 50 and let's declutter it. There we go. We'll declutter it, guys. So now this is showing 50 nautical miles out. And let's just go back. Perfect. We are good to go, guys. And look at that speed just hanging right out where we want it to hang out at. Uh, and again, this aircraft is pretty good. These aren't detents. But at least it gives you, you know, the indicator where you should be lining your throttles up. And then on the throttle itself as well, it has the line there. So it makes it a little easier to line that up, guys. One thing I always have been forgetting is to hit this takeoff config button, which we were configured for takeoff. So we're okay there. But nonetheless, we're rolling. So now we can just keep this guy over here kind of in our... I wish, uh, I wish it would give us an opportunity to have the VNAV somewhere else other than just kind of right here for our time but let's see we got 21 minutes to go guys so let's see 24 so by you know 
34 on the hour, we should be starting our descent. So, so far, guys, everything is copacetic. Let's see which side looks better. Eh, it's a little sunny over here. I guess we'll go for uh, this side over here. Little haze, let me check you guys out in the chat. Green lights and shit is kicking like Bruce Lee and Kareem Abdul Jabbar. <laughs> Boy, you crazy, man. And look at that, guys. We're almost halfway through the first flight, so we're doing good, man. In the meantime, let me go make sure baby girl got up there. My wife, I mm, love you. Uh, there we go again with uh, Active Sky jumping in those clouds out of the blue. Anyway, guys, I'll be right back with you. We got descent in about 20 minutes, so sit back, relax. Thanks for riding along with your boy on this last leg, and we got to say a prayer that we get into the next field with a decent landing. So, guys, I'll be right back, and I do mean right back with you.
All right, y'all, your boy is back. Little girl is actually upstairs now. And she's where she needs to be, guys. And I'm just like, whew. We definitely, definitely need to stick to landing on this one. I was just telling my wife that. I'm like, man, I don't know about this one, man. Green light got me testing my skills out on this one right here, boy. Uh, just because I haven't flown this so long, and we got to get this thing stopped on the dime. So let's start. First of all, let's go and check. Since we've been here cruising, we got the uh, top of drop, 13 minutes. And yes, that's still calculating us with a uh, three degree glide slope pitch down, of course. So let's also take a look right here, man. Okay. So we have our conditional 1216 in for our. We're doing the RNF too, guys. So we're going to continue to let the aircraft give us visual guidance on the RNAV even though I'll be hand flying it because I'm not 100% sure if this aircraft can actually follow the RNAV using its vertical I know Greenlight and I have been back and forth on the, how the vertical navigation system works you got to do some some trickery in order to get it to follow it it's like set it up let it go down try to match it up and then I don't know if it follows it or not what I notice is you do that you got to let the basically the the carrot get below where the actual profile is at you chase it then it captures and it'll follow the v-nav down but then for the next waypoint it kind of doesn't do that so for me it makes sense to just kind of do it manually that way i feel like i have control of the aircraft even like last time when we were in our way on to we were on approach into epley field our last stop and everything kind of went wrong i didn't feel so out of pocket because I was able to kind of manage the aircraft because I already had it in a certain profile um, and altitude. So it started climbing for whatever reason, but then we got it figured out as long as it didn't descend. So, okay, guys, so take a look at this. So, our bottom altitude we're going to put in is going to be basically like 900 feet because we want the vertical navigation to kind of make sure that it's allowing the flight director to bring me all the way down because I'm basically just going to follow that flight director um, especially if there's any type of weather because there is lateral and vertical navigation and uh, you can see here at sickle if we're not at 3000 it gives you you know a nice little procedure turn that you can do in order to get down to 3000 we will already be there hopefully if everything works out right we don't need to worry about putting in any type of doggone uh, ILS coordinates or uh, heading because it's on the RNAV. All right. And touchdown and airport elevation are one and the same on this one. And then again, once we get into the field, folks. Peep game right here. Peep game. Let's see. Green light says it will follow the guidance, but it will it will auto disconnect when you get to minimums, and that's when you hand fire the rest of the approach. I feel you, green light. I still don't know how to get it to exactly do that. Um, because every time I try to do it, it will not actually. So we're gonna try to do it this time. We'll let it go a little bit lower, and then we'll chase the carrot. We'll let it. We'll let it see if the V path takes a hold. If the V-Path takes a hold, then what I'm going to do is just keep it on V-Path and we'll keep it at the whole way. I'll put the bottom altitude in and we'll see if it does that, guys. So if it doesn't, uh, then it doesn't. So once we get direct to this diag, I'm going to actually make this diag uh, activated. And then hopefully we'll have our appropriate... Uh, well, Sickle is supposed to be at 3,000. So that's basically... Almost I can go direct to Sickle once I get to Diag, honestly speaking, guys, to be honest with you. Uh, but if not, we'll see what it does. We'll see what it does. Greenlight says just hit approach button. Like I said, we, I am. We're going to do it. I've done it before, so hopefully this works. I, I got thrust in you, man, as usual. I got thrust in you, so we'll see if it works out that way. I'm going to be watching it very closely. So this one's pretty easy. It's a straight up back taxi, but not on the runway. We're going to taxi. It does have a taxiway here, Alpha. So we know exiting the stage will be exiting stage right. For Stars and Sid, see Indianapolis uh, International. But 
We're not flying any SIDs or STARS. There's no ATC, so we are just going to handle our scandal that way. Here's the self-fueling ramp, but I think this is that's the terminal building. That's where we're going to go up to anyway. Uh, so Signature should be over here as well. So, there you guys go. Thank you for smashing that bot. I'm pretty sure that was El Señor Bacazado in the house. All right, guys. Eight minutes to top a drop. And the 8,000 is already in here. So what you'll notice in this aircraft, this is your target altitude. But any altitudes that have to do with the V-Path are going to come in this upper right box. And kind of show you that. And honestly, if I really wanted to do a trick, I would literally just program in... I'm pretty sure this is going to populate the right altitudes, but if it doesn't, I'll have to get on them really quick and follow that. So I almost want to just populate this approach into the main flight plan, but I'm not going to. I'm going to have some faith here, guys, and uh, that it will work. But once we get close enough, we will most certainly... Now I'm just curious. I don't want to put an Indianapolis Airport. I was going to pull it up and see what they're talking about, but we're not on an approach anyway. So again, so basically we are, well, I'll show you how nicely this approach is going to be. It's basically from uh, the last waypoint, uh, which is actually Victor Hotel Papa. It's kind of like perfectly down here. And then we go right into here, but I'm going to show you guys that right now. take a look out of this one because the Navigraph is going to be over here. So let's let me show you guys that. See, I'm trying to get it to. Okay, now we are going. Let's see what she's doing. We're going direct to VHP. A little bit shadier on this side. Okay, now I'll show you guys what we look like. <clears throat> All right, guys. That was weird. It didn't do a trend just like it was supposed to. Uh, anyway, if you can see here, that bottom waypoint is the last fix of VH, whatever it is. Did we make a left on up? That's Diag, which technically should have been in Navigraph's initial approach fixes, but it wasn't. And then you can see that little green line that's starting our approach and that brings us right over to sickle so you can see it pretty much brings us nice and downwind and gives us a nice 90 degree right base turn for runway uh, 18 and then on over to sickle we'll be on the r nav so yeah guys that is what is happening there let's get off of that and back over to where we need to be let us go ahead and check our top of drop is at uh, 3 minutes and 33 seconds so you guys know what that means now we have to put on our VNAV V path
Okay, so we have to reduce our altitude first. Now it says V-Path right here. You have to change your target altitude. Now it's on V-Path. And then we'll try to let it ride the V-Path. Hopefully it actually does connect to the V-Path. Um, again, we got to get that target altitude and then get it to actually, for whatever reason, like I'm saying, the V-Path, the carrot has to come right here. Come below it. You basically got to chase it to get it to capture it. It cannot be above. It almost has to go below. Then you get it, and then it's supposed to be a capture of the V-Nav. <laughs> we'll see if that works, guys. <laughs> you guys can see I'm, I'm a little skeptical. Uh, but that's all right. Okay, we got uh, 112 nautical miles until, uh, or 11 now, until we get to Victor Hotel Papa. But we start activities much sooner than in about 2 minutes and 11, 10 now seconds. We're going to start our descent to 8,000 feet to be at Victor Hotel Papa. I will say if you guys are not flying with ATC and you're not flying a star or a SID, right? SIDs are standard instrument departure from the field. And usually they have a standard instrument departure that if it's not a specific one by runway, then you'll have a standard one on the field, which just has the VORs around the field, and it tells you kind of what to do. You can use that, but usually it's it's ge it's geared for ATC to give you vectors, to, you know, to fly a certain runway heading, if not depicted on the chart, and then get to a certain altitude. Then they vector you over to your first point. So it kind of doesn't do any good to do that if you're doing it yourself anyway, other than you saying you're, you're basically the ATC. You're doing your own vectoring. Or do like we did, get up. Turn to your first VOR once you clear the field. Make sure that you can do either a left departure or right departure, depending on terrain, obstacles, and all that stuff. And then getting in to an airport with no standard terminal arrival becomes a little tricky because now you're thinking, well, what altitudes do I need to be at? How do I descend? And all that good stuff. So the best thing to do is look at your sky vector, look at all the MSAs, minimum safe altitudes. Okay, so if it's 9,000, you probably want to be at 11,000. So you're being. You're going to be at all these these pretty much these safe altitudes but you also have to know how to still plan for your descent and uh that's kind of what we did now guys so that's why we put it 8,000. our goal is to make uh 3, by diag but if we don't it's really we need to be at sickle at 3,000, which will have more than enough time uh because we're descending out of 350 minus eight right that's going to come out to 27,000. So about 60 miles out, we need to be descending down to make sure we make the eight. And then once we get to Vic Victor Hotel Papa, it's I believe 26 point something. Okay, here we go, guys. Let's pull back on that speed. Now let's go catch it. So we're back all the way on the speed. Let's see if we catch it. Which we will because we're right now it's asking for 26 and we're basically at 26. We're going to catch it. Okay, slowly we're catching it. Now, so I told you guys that's how it works. So now my V path is actually captured. You see that? So you have to chase it, which is what we did. You just don't make sure you don't overspeed. So we chased it and we did get V path the way I know how to do it. So again, it's a little bit tricky how you have to do it. Uh, we don't need to bleed that much speed, guys. Let's keep best forward speed. Indy executive traffic number 350 kilo tangles vacated flight level 350 currently at flight level 322. Uh, descending direct to Victor Hotel Papa at 8,000 for anticipated arrival on the RNAV 18 uh, full stop for Indy Executive. All right, guys, so we're on that VNAV path. So the cool thing about that is that there's three, there's eight. So now we could really go in here and type in three for now. 
we're typing in three so that immediately we can already be on a VNAV path profile so that it continues our vertical navigation down to 3000 uh, once we get to Victor Hotel Papa. And guys, uh, now it's going to be time to start really looking at our weight. Okay, right now we uh, total mass is at 7271 kilograms uh, as far as our weight is concerned. So now I have to go here and pull up my actual chart indicating that landing weight which is 7271 of course uh, approach flap 2 and landing full so now we have to and wing stab is going to be off off or on and, oh it's off okay which is fine shouldn't have any icing or anything like that we're doing good on the speed. Now at uh, 7269, that's closer to 7200. Our V ref at full flaps is 112. So full flaps V ref at that weight is 112. VFS. 128 and let's see our flap to let's see approach landing reference and our it's given us let's see a flap two doing V ref bada bing bada boom let's do our VAC now okay VAC is basically gonna be the same thing okay VAC is 113 V ref is 112 Allow steep approach speed brakes. I don't know why I'm saying enable automatic thrust reverse. This doesn't have any thrust reverse. All right, yeah, this bad boy don't have any thrust reverse. It'd be nice if it did, but it doesn't. We just go back to idle and then we have that, which I don't know why it's not modeled. So we're doing good, guys. Let's go ahead and get a quick check on that weather all right let's see here winds perfect still they're at eight knots not gusting anymore which is good right out of the south basically at 190 degrees 10 degrees off of being perfectly south. Temperature is 4 degrees Celsius. The altimeter is 3006, guys. Altimeter is 3006. We can actually jump that in now. We're not reporting to anybody. So let's just get it in now. If we were flying with ATC, we actually wouldn't do this because then they would ask us what our uh, correct altitude is. But there's not. And we're almost 18,000 feet. So we're just getting ahead of the gizain. All right, guys, so final approach speed with those eight knots is going to be again right at uh, one. It'll be 117 between 117 and 120, guys. Getting to the field, no problem. We really don't need that at all. All we're going to do is exit stage right since we're coming in from the south. All right, we're at flight level one, nine or eight, which is 19,800 feet, descending on down, guys. And uh, again, we're gonna have to play this one super close to the ear. Let's also put our standby in, which is 3006. 
3006 in the house, 1000 to go to transition altitude. In the executive traffic, number 350 Kilo Tango is now at flight level 186, descending direct to Victor Hotel Papa VOR, which will be crossing at an 8000 with expected arrival on the RNAV 18 full stop in the executive. Alright, guys, we're doing pretty good. We got VHP and 35 nautical miles. And subfo on the final approach fix should be at 27, so only another 300 feet down. And that's more than enough. There's 7.6 nautical miles between sickle and subfo. And then after subfo, Isabi should be at 1680, then on down. Of course, we're going to let. Once we get uh, direct from uh, Dieg to sickle, we are most certainly going to make sure that we put our bottom altitude in here of 922 feet. Or 900 feet, I should say, so the so the VNAV can just take us on down. So the good thing is we don't have to worry about this piece. She's pitching down nicely to make sure that we cross at 8,000. And then, of course, we have 3,000 programmed in there. And you know what I'm going to do, guys? Just to be on the safe side, I should also add in uh, Sickle. We're going to add it in right here. S-I-C-L. Pretty soon, I'm not even going to need this. I'm just going to have the aircraft do the whole VNAV thing all by itself in the actual flight plan because I haven't flown this enough to know if this stuff is going to populate down there or not, which I'm pretty sure it is. But your boy is going to do it just like that. We're at 12,000 now, so let's keep working this situation so we know we have a good situation here. This one, we're going to add sub foe. Because I'm pretty sure before it used to actually already populate those things without me having to activate it, so I don't trust it. So at subfo, we're supposed to be at. Okay, let's start slowing our speed way down. Subfo, we're supposed to be at 2,700 feet. Because we're about to be at 10,000, so we got to start slowing down. Going to enter that and lastly we're going to put in is by Okay, Isby, and Isby needs to be at, let's get our landing lights on, guys. Landing lights are on, we're at 10,000, so we're not that far off. And ISBIY should be at 1680, guys.
Now the beauty in this is, this will give us enough time to see if the other ones are working. Then I could just go direct and it already have the altitude of the runway in there. So let's enter that. There we go guys so the RNAV should be set up by way of us already having it in there just to make sure that we are good we are at nice 230 which is probably what we're gonna stay right here So we'll see how this next joint works out. Right now it should definitely Okay, let's see. Okay, top of drop for this next one is on a minute 45. Minute 46. So we'll have to do the same thing again, guys. Now that we're making our left turn. Okay, so we have 23 nautical miles, five to go. So that's about right to two, to basically three, eight minus uh, five is three, three times five is 15. So right at 15, we should be fine. So this, this should work out well, guys. So let's put our bottom altitude in there, which is actually 922 feet. So there's that V path again. Let's get our VS situated. Once that moves again, guys, we'll do the catchy thingy, my bobber. You'll know how we do it. And then after this song is done, I believe we're gonna turn the music off and get ready for the action. Let's see, uh, Bakasato gonna be in your Discord. VC, time to get Madi soon, Jay. Also hoping for a butter. Man, I'm about to go fry some eggs here in a bit. I'm starving. You hear me? Woo, Gio. Hungry, boy. After trucking, after doing that real ATS, my man is hungry, man. All right, flight controls are on for you guys so that I don't forget. And here comes the ticker. Let it kind of catch it. Okay, V path did catch it, so look, the magic trick did work. Green light. I want my plate to add some fried potatoes to that. Yep, and some vegetables, Gio. Do you know I need those vegetables? The executive traffic, November 350 Kilo Tango, is currently 7,100 right downwind of runway 18, expecting RNAV 18 full stop in the executive. All right, guys, let's pull back on that power a little bit. And we are inbound, guys. So far, so good. We're just going to literally do it this way. And see if that VNAV joint works for us.
So we're on a nice downwind, guys. All right, fam. Let's go ahead and jump them noises off. It's time for business. All right, guys. Time for the business. Sickle is really the first. Uh, Pratt P is in the house, man. What's going on, man? Thanks for checking out, brother. Hope you are doing well, friend. And we are on our last leg of two. First leg was Duluth, Minnesota, down to Epley Field, which is Omaha, Nebraska. Now we are flying into uh, one of the YouTubers' uh, actual real airports, uh, Premier One Driver. If you guys watch him, he does, he does actually fly. This is his base airport. He lives in Indiana. So if you guys check him out on YouTube, not that I'm giving him a plug. He doesn't know me. I don't know him. I'm just saying this would be his field. It's just green light. Actually, green light is the one that recommended this field. I was trying to go to Indianapolis. So, uh, but green light knows the same guy I'm talking about. So, all right. It is time for the action. And 6.6 uh, .6 miles to Dieg, and then we'll be doing our right to Sickle. Let's let the aircraft bleed a little bit of speed there, guys. Which we'll have plenty of time to do that, because from Dieg to Sickle is uh, going to be, we'll already be at 3,000. So now we'll be able to completely see our route here, even with this out, which is the cool thing about this situation. All right, we're at 216, looking good. We'll call right base for runway uh, 18. And let's not forget our V speeds. Our V speeds are here, guys. V ref is 112, so we'll be pulling back about 118 to 120, uh, and hopefully a lot closer. We cannot mess around with this with this airport. There is no room for any margin of error here. Here's where we make our money on our speed bleed. We're starting to pitch up. Watch that speed just melt off like one butter. Okay, that speed is melting off like warm butter. Like I said, guys, that's what we want. If you look here, our flaps one, safety speed is 180, flaps two and three is uh, uh, 170, flaps full 160. All right, three, two, one. Flaps one. Indy executive traffic, number 350, Kilo Tango has turned right base for runway 18, expecting full stop on the RNAV 18 for Indy executive. All right, guys, landing lights are on, and uh, we'll get the gear deployed here in a second. We are doing a full flaps landing. Our V ref is 112. V approaches between 118 and uh, 120. We'll see how she feels. All right, we also have our V path there, so we are keeping it copacetic. And again, we could technically go flaps two or three, but we're not going to. The nose is just fine here at 160. Once we do our turn, that's what we're going to do, guys. Now, let's try green lights approach really quick here, guys. I'm going to be brave. So let's uh, hold this right here at the altitude. Okay, so we're holding altitude right here. And let's uh, activate this approach because we are direct sickle. Actually, we're going to go here. Okay, so let's hit that approach button. 
Okay, approach button is activated. We have, uh, and we're definitely underneath the glide slope. And we got it down to 900 feet, so there we go. Indy Executive Traffic, number 350 Kilo Tango is now turning right to final for runway 1A, expecting full stop for Indy Executive. Alright, so we got it on the approach. Now, I'm not sure if she's going to just automatically pitch down, but we'll see. Now we're supposed to go to 2,700 feet, so this shouldn't be coming down for quite some time. You can see the runway off there in the distance. You don't have to activate it. It will automatically load approach. Okay, roger that. But to just put my mind at ease, it did put those same altitudes in there, as you can see, guys. Oops. I was a little worried about it, but there they are right there. We're direct here for 2,700 feet. So green light says it should automatically activate here on approach. Five miles to subfo, which will be at, uh, supposed to be at uh, doggone uh, 2,700 feet. So we already know that. And we're just cruising right along, guys. Again, we got to get this one right, man. We got to get it right. We should see this glide slope coming down at any time. Because now technically we're not doing the vertical navigation. We're actually doing the approach mode. Hey guys, we're going to go speed check flaps too. Okay, there's that carrot. And once it gets to the second one, we'll reduce the landing gear. There it is. Gear is coming down. Don't forget that approach speed of 120. Let's see if she captures. And she captured. Well done, green light. We trust it within our green light. Flaps full. Landing gear is down and confirmed. Flaps are out to full. Speed is bleeding. We'll just keep her going now. There's basically our approach speed right there, 120. All right, guys. You can see those winds are kind of toying with us because we're still pretty much yawing. Very important that we keep our speed right where it needs to be so we don't have a stall out, guys. And we are fully configured for landing, guys. And uh, we're basically on a five mile final here. In the executive traffic, November 350 Kilo Tango is on a five mile final, expecting full stop for runway uh, 18. Okay, gear down. And uh, everything is looking good here, guys. All right, guys, he's on the RNAV 18 as well. We're just going to let this thing ride it down. You can see those winds right now. They're pretty egregious, guys. They are actually, uh, you see that, 13, so they are kind of gusting right now. They're at 8, 7. See that? So now we pull back that power. So here we go. Like I said, guys, we got to get this one right. Minimums is 1,220 uh, feet. Autopilot. Autopilot is disconnected. It's all on us now, guys.
gear is down. I'm all paranoid about the gear. All right, guys, let's get it right. Bring that speed back. We want to be as slow as possible, if I'm being honest with you. Sterile cockpit, so if you guys are saying something, I apologize, but uh, this is the real deal here. Let's pitch up a little bit. Check. Low. Minimums. Minimums landing. Okay, butter guys. Power all the way back. All right, welcome it in, guys. We made it. Welcome it in, guys. All right, we should be getting a turnaround. Flaps are coming up here. Woo! I'm telling you what, guys. There was I did float it a little bit, but the thing is, the thing is, we really practice on our speeds. So that was the biggest thing, guys, was handling that speed, and we did it. Indy Executive November three five zero Kilo Tango is vacating uh, runway one eight on Alpha. Will be taxi into ramp for Indy Executive traffic. All right, guys. You can do it, bro. That's a beautiful lady. Told you. Thank you, big dog. I had my trust in my green light, dog, so appreciate the tutelage, man. And it's all about learning, baby. We did it. We handled it. All right, y'all. So we got two butters today in this bad boy. And I haven't flown it. Uh, Buckles at us says, ooh, bait butter. Nice landing. Thank you, guys, man, for real. Uh, let's bring her into the ramp, guys, and then uh, get green light coming in, do some replays, and that'll be it for us today, guys. Woo! I mean, I ain't gonna lie, it was a little nerve-wracking just because I know I'm a floater. You know, when it comes to uh, my approaches and trying to really manage pitch. I'm telling you guys, I'm still getting the Thrustmaster TCA. I'm gonna order it today. But this joint here for private jets and general aviation is my joint. I'm telling you, man, this thing is really nice. I don't care who doesn't like it, man. I'm telling you what, I like it. <laughs> and you can see I can get butters with it, so... Uh, well done today, guys, flying on board. Appreciate you guys' patience, uh, you know, with doing the two legs. And uh, especially on that first flight where we kind of were chasing our tail on that first approach. Uh, nice essay. I'm out, y'all. All right, Geo, appreciate you for checking in, man. And we're just kind of waiting for green light to get in. But we'll do our taxi back to the ramp now. Welcome to Indy Executive, guys, in Indianapolis, basically Indiana. we got green light on the way in. And then once again, reiterating the fact that this is a uh, Premier Driver One's or Premier One Driver, a YouTuber who flies an actual Beechcraft Premier One A. He's a veteran. He's a former Air Force pilot. Uh, this is his field. So, not that it was intentionally done for that. That's just a little fun fact here. That's right. Hey, hey, uh, Geo. We landed at Indy Executive with Executive Decision on board. That's you. You were in the back making your <laughs> Executive Decision. <laughs> oh, my goodness. There we go, guys. 
so two butters for the day not bad at all guys I really do like flying this premier uh, or this phenom 300 I want to do a lot more of it uh, so geo man get some rest man eat that eat that grub brother Okay, this is basically the ramp area area over here for everything. Thank you, baby. Love you. Thank you for all the support all the time, babe. Te quiero mucho, baby. All right. Well. In the executive traffic citation here, November 7th, one Charlie Hotel is inbound for Dyke intersection for the RNAV 18 approach. In the traffic. All right. So he's just hitting that Dyke. Gio says, hey, Ben Sanchez. So I'm not quite sure where all the parking happens over here. Never been here, per se, so we're just going to whip it back around, kind of, guys. Bacazado says, yo, Daisy. That's right, y'all. Wifey has spoken. The queen of my life, man. In my Bernie Mac voice, Miss Parker, Miss Parker. <laughs> All right, y'all. We're coming around here, and we're just going to park it. All right, guys. Parking brake is set. Landing lights. Taxi lights are off and confirm. And let's shut her down, guys. Miss Parker, Miss Parker. Citation 71 Charlie Hotel. Mm -hmm. Turning base for RNAV 18. <laughs> traffic. Boy, you crazy. You better go ahead and get it on in, Smokey. <laughs> All right, y'all. So now it's fun time, guys. So we're in, we're here, and uh, technically we'll just leave the aircraft on. Um, actually, you know what? Let's get the GPU on, but before we do the replay, we will get the GPU off. Okay, GPU is available. That way we can just loiter now, but once we, before we get going for our replay, I'm not opening any doors, um, uh, we will most certainly get rid of that, otherwise the plane will probably land with that, you guys know how the replays work, but there we go guys, pretty copacetic, if another aircraft wants to go by, should be able to just follow the line, have enough wingspan, we're going to pull up right here, nice and parallel to the building, so that passengers can disembark, uh, why this plane? No, it does have SIDS and STARS, Geo. Uh, this plane... Oh, you're talking about... Hey, Dre, do you have the 748 by SSG? Why? Okay, you're talking about the 747. I do have that, Geo, and for whatever reason, mine does, so you might want to re-download it. But what I do know, Geo, is there's been a lot of problems with uh, that particular aircraft and the updates that they've done. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's crazy that... Uh, it doesn't have SIDS or STARS, man. 7-1 Charlie Hotel is turning final for RNAV. 1-8, any traffic. All right, so nothing like a little piano tunes to get us going. Anytime me and we support this guy, even though he acts like he can't open his eyes. <laughs> hey, that's all right, baby. You know what we talked about with Mr. Executive Decision here, so we know who we're dealing with here. El Senor Executive Decision, a.k.a. Load em Up, a.k.a. Captain Giovanni Gio in the house all right guys so we did make it here uh you know what i think it's time to get me off the camera 
and just hear my wonderful, wonderful voice uh, because we're going to be basically spotting here. <laughs> Hashtag sleepy Dre. <laughs> Hashtag executive decision, Geo. <laughs> Hashtag executive decision for USA. But you know what, man? It's all fun, guys. You know, flying with Captain Geo and Leo Sticks, Greenlight, Greg Hill, HD, Rock City, Phoenix J, uh, Cam, uh, and the list goes on is definitely always worth it. That's right, Captain Geo, man. One love, man. That's what it's all about. We definitely have fun on here, and Geo and the rest of y'all, man, you guys always make it worth it because we just can't take ourselves too seriously, man. You know what I mean? And, uh, you know, we earn our respect, but we have fun as well. So we are literally in a pattern here waiting for El Señor Green Light in the house. And it has been a pretty good trip today, guys. So I really can't complain. And even if I did complain, who the heck is listening, right? All right. We should be getting green light. Uh, he should pretty much be on final out there now. There he is. November 7-1 Charlie Hotel. Bring it in, Papa. Bring it in. We know green light going to get the touchdown blocks, but let's ease back. And get ready to see SA come in, man. All right, let's get it. Let's get it. Appreciate the challenge of picking this airport because I sure was nervous, but uh, now all eyes on you, baby. All eyes on you. <laughs> it's nice when you land and you don't have to worry about the pressure anymore. Somebody else got to worry about it right now, and that somebody is El Señor Greenlight. Uh, thanks for riding along. Don't know the worst of this song, but we going to keep going on. Green light landing on the field, Indy executive. My boy, green light. I mean, Geo is exec. I'm just kidding, y'all. Just kidding. Don't mind me. Don't worry, Geo. I'm gonna keep my day job because I know you about to talk some trash if you're still on, man. Waiting on the green light, then guys, we're gonna get a, a couple of replays in here. I know, for example, I was uh, very floaty on the. Uh, well, you know, all I'm gonna do, man, is pick up some of these big old booties and keep on going to the. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's right. That's right. Hey, me and wifey will be rooting for you, dog. Land, scoop them up, and head to the land of the Dominicans, baby. It's all you. <laughs> oh, man. Green light and his search for derrieres. We must help this man out. All right, y'all. We waiting for green light to bring it in, man. Real talk. He's on his final approach. He did a pretty good job of, of keeping that distance. Yeah, see, I knew G would say, yeah, keep your day job. <laughs> what you silly dude. <laughs> I needed to give you something else to talk about, Gio. So there you go. <laughs> there you go. That's why That's why that one night, Gio, Carl's Jr., or whoever he was trying to eat, that's why they closed oh, down on you. That's right. That's right, man. Got to switch the tongue on him, baby, and switch to a different language to let him know how serious you are. <laughs> hey, but for real though, cranberry juice and gray goose on the way in, man. Don't spill that cup. <laughs> All right, y'all. And I, once again, man, I appreciate everybody hanging out on this Sunday night. And uh, I would do it, but I definitely enjoy doing it much better with you guys on board man for real for real for real for real for real mike jones was in the house big up to mike jones big up to gray kill big up to bacazado big up to captain geo stell park the warden for checking in uh also captain mild checked in man big up to him 
and uh let's see here who else we got obviously green light number one of course first and foremost which i gave a shout out before but i always got to say it again and again wifey i love you kids i love you man thanks you guys for your support and uh yeah that's pretty much who showed up in chat and pratt p6 man thank you for uh for you know uh always keeping the chat popping and those are in the back lurking in the background that's all right man but you guys can check in as too it's all love the flight only gets better when you guys are more interactive but at the end of the day i appreciate each and every one of you guys um and he says hey dre call me as soon as you're done with this live all right i gotta go report in the wifey first take a quick break then i hit you up uh because you guys know how it is uh this mining session shall be fun. Yes, yes, absolutely. Here comes Greenlight, guys. The man of the hour. El Señor Greenlight. Let's get it close. Let's get it close. There we go. Look at him. Nice and low. Nice and low, guys. Nice and low. Bow, y'all. Nice. Very nice. Excellent work, excellent work, green light. That was a very nice landing center line right in the touchdown zone, man. That's why I'm taking notes from you, baby. And I know he's just getting started. Uh, I'm gonna go check on YouTube to see what up. Uh, I downloaded this joint and re download it. Still, no Sid Star. So, guys, we definitely made it in, and green light just pulled in with a great landing, and we're gonna start our replay session. Okay, Senor Greenlight, it's always a pleasure to fly with you, brother. Great landing. Thanks for always helping out, man. And we're going to keep this thing going. I'll probably give you a call tomorrow if I'm flying again. Otherwise, man, God bless. Have a great evening and great to see you on the stream. You too, brother, man. You tell Daisy, everybody, big up, big up. Oh, for sure, for sure. And we're going to talk because I, I talked to wifey about it. So definitely, uh, for sure, at the minimum, me is coming out when you... When you you know when you come this way, so we'll we'll I'll, we'll chat about that uh, offline, man. But big up, have a great night, and talk to you soon, brother. Peace and love. See you later, bro. All right, y'all. So the last thing that we got to do as well is we didn't stop our time, so let's go ahead and do that. If we're being officially uh, official, we can reset it. We don't care. Transponder. We could get that to standby. Don't forget, guys. We're also gonna come down here and get rid of the GPU so it doesn't. So it doesn't get modeled when we're doing our replay. So no GPU. And then now, guys, we got to get off the VATSIM network. This will be the last step here. Oh, yeah. And now we can officially get into the replay. And see how we did. All right, let's come back about right here. Perfect. Look at that. Look at that, guys. One click and I had us back in the replay spot, man. That's the skills that your boy got. I'm just messing with y'all. Ooh, she was angry, boy. Let's get another one of those. She is coming in nicely. She was a fisher boy. Again, thank you guys for hanging out.
Ooh, just barely kissed it. Center line, guys. We cannot be mad at that at all, guys. I mean, we just kissed it. I could have had it on the first one, but I was I just didn't want to slam her down. I was looking for that Bacazado butter, and we got it. Nice and center line, guys. Let's run that joint back. You know we gonna run it back, y'all. So this first part, we actually had it, but we pulled that nose up just a little bit like, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. We don't wanna slam it, but it, it would probably still have been a nice landing. I don't know if it would have been that butter. There we go again, still working it. But just look how those wheels just barely touch down. Bam, nice and center line, guys. Nice and center line. I mean, for real. Uh, we couldn't ask more. That was actually better than our first landing on a more, maybe because I was a little bit more paranoid about this one, that uh, we ended up kind of doing a better job. comes I mean, just barely, just, just like kissed it. Like bada bing, bada boom, y'all. All right, fam, you guys know what time it is. I already said everybody's name out, but again, wifey, first and foremost, big up to you, love you. Everybody else down the list, you guys know I got you, man. Pratt P, Bacazado, Captain Gio, uh, Mike Jones, green light, obviously, man. We said Bacazado was in the house, uh, the warden was in the house, um, and uh, Keyshawn Christopher came and checked in. I forgot about him, but don't want to forget about that. And if you were in the background and you didn't say anything, man, thank you. And I said a bunch of names earlier, but I'm trying not to miss anybody. And if I did miss your name, trust me, it's not on purpose, man. It's just uh, trying to wrap it up. It's been four hours and 47 minutes of streaming. Not to mention the hour or two or however long before streaming that it takes to get this done. So your boy is ready for a break. Bacazado, I'll probably be on Discord here in a little bit. I'm going to take a little bit of a break. Geo2, got to go talk to the wife, the commander-in-chief. Make sure everything is copacetic. One love to everybody. One love to everybody. And hopefully we stream tomorrow. We'll see. Uh, have a great rest of your weekend. If you're working tomorrow, have a great start to your work week. If not, enjoy another day off on President's Day. And guys, I'm your boy, Dre Sanchez. Once again, appreciate it. Much gratitude for you guys hanging out for sure. I'm your boy, Dre. And it's been real. I'm gone. <laughs>